Uh, aerial picture live overhead in Los Angeles uh, of this police chase here. It looks like it is somewhat, oh no, it continues. Here we go, pit maneuver. There we go. And the driver now oh, almost encircled by squad cars there and he keeps running into them. This is live. All right, we're gonna hear now from Fox 11, Stu Mundell in the chopper, let's listen. Cell phones out. That's another thing. That all the law enforcement, they do not want to see that. Of course, you don't want to see anything like that. There was a, there's the spike strip right there. Now, did he hit it? That's a tough one. I was actually looking at something else, but maybe some of our viewers will bet a better view, or maybe you, even Roxia, saw if he hit it. But, of course, law enforcement, they want to keep the public safe. And one of these... Away. Okay, so it looks like he got away there. Stu Mundell still narrating from the chopper Sky Fox overhead. Let's listen in to our Fox 11 Los Angeles folks as they continue to cover this police chase there. Let's listen. Right now on Rosecrans, I'm kind of curious to see if that spike, if that front tire or that rear tire on the driver's side caught that spike strip. Are we at a signal light right now because the vehicle stopped yes. again? Okay, it's very interesting to me to see this because for moments it seems like it's calm, he's obeying all of the signals, and then we just saw something like this where he completely did the opposite of what we were expecting. What, um, what is in the back of that truck? I can't tell. What's in the back of that pickup? I what, would is venture that wood? to be, yeah, it looks like logs or stumps. Okay. There you go, using some of the power of Sky Fox right there. Yeah, it looks like just some wood, some stumps. Adds a little weight to it. But you know what? That's also some great catch there, Roxia. If that rear, if that tailgate pops open and those start falling out, that could create a lot of damage for anybody that's right behind that vehicle, law enforcement and or any of those civilians. Those things weigh a good, a good amount of weight. And then, of course, rolling around on the road, if somebody doesn't see it, that could create some problems. Right now, though, you can see that driver. It looks like uh, I'm not going to get too uh, into the uh, what the kids do, but it almost looks like he's Is inhaling he? nitrous. Yes. It, yes. Whoa, what was, oh, oh, there we go. Yeah, that caught me off guard, that's for sure. And it, it, this guy is inhaling nitrous oh. and driving oh. around down there. This is just insanity. And, of course, this is and probably one of, of this might be it. This, look at all of the officers. Look at all of the officers. Yeah, I thought he was going to get stuck there on that center divider. Yeah, all those deputies out there, and that's probably one of the reasons why they re-engaged that pursuit. You know, this uh, driver, we just clearly saw, we believe what he's doing in there. Could have been helium for all we know, but chances are that was some nitrous. So this driver very impaired while driving out here. The deputies from the uh, Compton area chasing him, and again, right now, in a, in a very... so. Uh, I'm just looking at the streets. I was just wondering if this was a neighborhood that I knew. We're in the Compton neighborhoods out here, but you can see that vehicle making his way a little slower now. But uh, definitely, this is something that's so dangerous. That driver, yes, he is stopping for those lights, but you can clearly impair this afternoon, and these deputies working just to bring this to an end safely. Yeah, it is quite deceiving because, as you point out, uh, you see him complying in certain traffic situations, and you think, okay, he is using good judgment if you can call it that but then obviously you see moments like this where first of all he's a DUI driver uh, that's why police are after him and if he is indeed inhaling nitrous whatever he's doing with that balloon in the front seat of his vehicle obviously his judgment and his actions are going to be compromised and this is very worrisome because now we're talking about him being in what looks like a neighborhood and uh, you yes. just don't know who could be out there walking their dog uh, maybe some kids could even be out there playing this is very concerning very concerning indeed but at least he's driving a little bit slower that's if there is a positive but still even if you're driving slower and you're that type of impaired you, you just don't know what's going to happen and you can clearly see that driver with that balloon right there for all we know he's not but it definitely looks like that's the only thing we can say right now it looks like he's inhaling so in, inhaling nitrous as he's driving through this Compton neighborhood uh, you can see the streets right there popular all, oleander uh, and, and moving a little 
little bit slower. Maybe I'll bring up the uh, the speedometer for folks if the uh, if they okay that. I'm just gonna bring it up to get an idea. But you know what? Even at 20 miles an hour, even at 10 miles an hour, if he strikes a child or a person that might just, like you said, just out for a walk or walk crossing the street, it still could be lethal. So even though he's driving a little bit slower, following some of these street, uh, some of the the law enforcement, uh, street and traffic enforcement. Excuse me, I can't get my words out. Uh, but you can see it right there. They basically have backed off, I, or they have not backed off, because I, the, my scanner kind of got quiet there for a moment. But uh, this pursuit definitely continuing. We got mm -hmm. some uh, pedestrians oh, yeah. just yeah. crossing the street right there. Thank goodness he didn't make that turn. So, Stu, uh, this, you said, began in the Carson-Compton area. It looks like we're still in that vicinity, that area still. Uh, call has come in as a as far as you know a reckless dui driver and this is where we are right now he hasn't really left the neighborhood of where this began and it does appear that he is alone in that vehicle definitely seems to be alone inside that vehicle definitely hasn't really left the neighborhood and also we keep, the speeds really haven't gotten up to anything you know anything really that we would call dangerous he's actually been staying pretty much within the speed limit unless you know they spin him around and he tears out of there and he, but he did strike a, a deputy's vehicle that is going to be a huge uh, a huge issue for that driver and then of course all this uh, f uh, felony fleeing that is also going to be a problem right now though that deputy I'm trying to see if that's the same number I believe that is the same vehicle that has been doing the pit maneuver so perhaps they'll try it again but it seems like it's pretty unsuccessful with that pickup truck it, it does he's been very successful in doing the maneuver but that vehicle just continues to drive even though he spins it around they tried to block it in a moment or two ago and this is probably where it's going to come to an end because it's behind a tree uh, Olivier again uh, he's going to try to move the move Sky Fox around right now but it does seem like for some reason he did come to a stop right there but he has played cat and oh, mouse there, there he goes. goes many many times in the past i was wondering if that was what was going to happen because that is really what got our attention we were listening to it at van nuys uh, he stopped and then he would go and then he would stop and then he would go so he's been doing that pretty much the entire time that uh, deputies have been behind that vehicle playing that same game again right now so you know how are they going to bring this to an end this would be a good opportunity to try to bring those spikes oh it's a dead end street. I didn't even hear that, but it does seem like some of those pylons are missing. So, and it might be a little deceiving right there where if that's a wall or a fence, oh, that's the wash. So he is kind of stuck right there. He might be able to make his way along that bike path. Hopefully he doesn't, but uh, this is an interesting situation for sure. And again, you know, deputies have their weapons out. They are not here. They're not goofing around. And that uh, driver clearly impaired this uh, this afternoon. But right now, really doesn't have much of a choice of where he can go. So we're going to keep an eye on this for sure. Well, you know, and also something to take into consideration is we don't know if this individual is armed. We have absolutely no idea, and neither does law enforcement. This is why they're keeping their distance. This is why they're now also approaching with their guns drawn. So we have to just wait and see what the next move is, if he will indeed open that door and follow the instructions and come out with his arms raised or what he decides to do. It's, it's quite problematic, of course, when you have someone who isn't making the best decisions under the circumstances of being um, driving under the influence, as police are, believe he is, and as we've witnessed him um, with that balloon and what we assume perhaps is nitrous. That's right. Very defiant indeed. And you got now you have a dog just uh, on the loose out there walking, uh, walking along Compton, very much a neighborhood. And right there, you can see there there is a pun. I, I don't I don't know. I don't think he's got really any place to go. Uh, it, this is this right now is a little bit of a standoff. Maybe that uh, driver's just trying to uh, use up the last of whatever he has to get intoxicated with. The window is definitely coming down. Uh, let's take a peek and see what he's doing. Hopefully, it, there there you go. That's uh, that is clearly the actions of a very intoxicated yes. person uh, in in that driver's seat, looking up at us right there. Uh, the uh, deputies, though, they are 
are not goofing around. They are definitely not playing. You have deputies over here, their weapons out, all the deputies that were behind them. Right now you can see they're kind of uh, just, they, they are all amassing. And uh, another spike, though, okay, so they're going to bring the spike strip out just in case this driver tries to wiggle his way out of here. But there really isn't any place for him to go. Uh, that fall off of there, I, th that could be lethal. And uh, we don't want to see that. We don't even we don't want to see that suspect injured. But right now, these deputies, they've got this car wedged in uh, that pursuit suspect not getting out of that vehicle. And my guess, that's the California Highway Patrol airship overhead. It, my guess is that he might just want to He's probably just going to sit in there, wait this out, use up whatever he has to get into intoxicated and then make a decision about coming out of that vehicle. Um, we also don't know if they're in touch with this individual as far as uh, maybe negotiating with him, uh, maybe have his phone number, they're talking to him. We, we have no idea. No, the, we don't at all, Aroxia, though the uh, law enforcement, they have so many tricks up their sleeves. Their, their bag of tricks seems to be endless. Uh, they're moving that vehicle now, they're not going to push him off that edge. They're just going to kind of wedge him in there so he can't back out or possibly get some speed and injure a deputy. So that's one of the reasons why they're just putting that vehicle right up against that bumper and uh, just to keep that vehicle from moving in any type of way. They might just make their way over there, open up that door, and try to take that suspect into custody. We saw that early. We saw that about a week ago. I was actually shocked at how quickly those uh, deputies just kind of made a plan and then just put it into action. Right now, though, you can see that uh, window down again. Um, definite movement inside that car. He's, uh, he's expressing his, uh, he, he's, he's talking to the officers right now. Uh, you can see he's a little upset. They're already shooting the pepper balls at him. Uh, you know, the, uh, the law, as far as law enforcement goes, uh -oh. the deputies, those are all, that's all, oh, that's okay. all pepper balls. That's gotcha. all pepper balls. Uh, but they they have to break that rear window to get that actually, to, to, to actually get that guy and, and be effective. Sometimes they'll shoot what they call the, uh, um, the 40 millimeter, which is basically a, a big slug or a big sandbag, just to break that window. That tint right there is not allowing those pepper balls to make their way into that car. But you can see that window's open. These deputies, very aggressive. They want to get this guy into custody. And it, it really, truly, uh, one of the reasons might be they don't want to see him do something dumb like try to drive away and fall into that wash. That, that, that's probably a good 15, 20 feet. That could be lethal. Uh, so right now they're just uh, they're they're starting their negotiations, but we already saw them shoot some pepper balls at them. So hopefully that's going to be enough to get that guy out of the car and they can take him into custody. Right, we do see him putting his hands out um, off and on, but we don't know if he's just trying to communicate some. See, like right now, what is he doing right now? Uh, that's a good question, Aroxy. We were I was wondering what he was doing like t five, ten minutes ago when he was uh, driving around and, and hitting uh, deputies' vehicles. Uh, it does seem like a portion of that rear window He's broken. I don't know what out. he just tossed out there. Oh, he, he tossed out a piece of glass. That's There is a center window right there. I don't know if you can really make that out. That was the tint held the glass together, and he just tossed it out of the car. But this is an opportunity for them to shoot those pepper balls into that vehicle, into the cab. They, I believe they're doing it right now and that may be enough of an irritant to get that guy out of that car and once he's out then they can take him into custody and just to be clear Stu this is not a stolen vehicle this may be very well his own vehicle all we know is this was a pursuit that began because of a reckless DUI driver that's the same information we're getting up here, Roxy, 100%. And uh, that that driver, you know, they, they did do a couple of pit maneuvers. That pickup truck spun around. I thought for sure it was going to get stuck on that uh, on that center divider. But I have to really hand it to these deputies out here. Uh, you know, they, they're not, uh, and, they're, and I think one of the reasons why they're not basically playing that waiting game with that suspect is because they are afraid that he is going to injure himself uh, by trying to move forward at some point we don't know how intoxicated that driver is it does look like he put up that put up that side window which may be a big plus for the deputies because if they start shooting some more of those pepper balls now that gas is going to stay inside that vehicle now uh, clearly smoking something in there so uh, this driver trying to use up whatever he has inside that vehicle 
uh, to get intoxicated probably before he goes into custody because he's probably going to be in custody for some time. And, and it looks like, Stu, we are at, um, in a neighborhood, right? These are homes surrounding this vehicle. Definitely. Yes. This is going to be in the Compton neighborhood. Uh, Poplar and Wilmington is the major. The Wilmington is probably going to be on the right side of the screen right there. And you can see the number of deputies that made their way behind that vehicle. And it is. He ran out of roadway right there. And uh, there's no place for really for that car to go. And I have a feeling that that uh, suspect is just going to be in that vehicle for the next couple of minutes getting intoxicated and then hopefully just going to be getting him, letting himself out of that uh, out of that truck and then going into custody. But I have to wonder if they are just waiting to get some more of those uh, those pepper balls, as it would be, to shoot through that hole they have now in the window, and uh, that might be effective now because he has the, he has the side windows up, so that gas will stay in that powder will stay inside that cab. Um, so you've covered so many of these, but. Just for people watching this and wondering, well, why don't they just approach the vehicle and end this? Why just stand around and wait for what happens next? Why give him the option of when he decides he feels like coming out of the vehicle? What, what, what's your explanation for that? Well, the, the, the explanation for that is always the same. It's safety. It is all about safety. Like you said, we don't know if that suspect is armed. He still is in control of that vehicle, which could be a deadly weapon. In this case, he's actually right at the edge of a wash with about a 20-foot drop. And the this, this suspect's safety is also a concern for all law enforcement. So right now, if they would approach that vehicle, let's say they would just kind of run up, open up that door. Okay, Andrew Kraft back here. Uh, excellent narration there uh, overhead of this now standoff scene with this uh, suspected DUI driver there uh, in Compton in L.A. County. Uh, but like I said, excellent narration by uh, Stu Mundell. Uh, like I said, this is a standoff situation now. We showed you bits and pieces uh, of the pursuit itself, uh, and there were several kind of stops and starts uh, a couple pit maneuvers, failed ones, might I add. So uh, it looks like uh, officers there, they have their weapons drawn. They're communicating with this suspect. Uh, we got to step away from this right now. There are a lot more stories left to get to. Uh, if this is still ongoing, we'll definitely take you back out to it. Before we go, take a look. That was the first pit maneuver. It failed. And so... Uh, this uh, suspected DUI driver was not giving up, and then he ran into that dead end there. That's where police now have him cornered. Well, that it's not just again. about keeping people safe. It's also about the safety of the suspect, believe it or not. Let's see what they'll do. Another one. There it goes. Another one. Yeah, but another one just tossing it in there. Uh, nope, he threw he that one back out. out. Yeah. Yeah, he just tossed it out, and, the, and here comes some more pepper balls. Oh. He got some in his eyes. You saw that one yeah. right there. It, it bounced off the windshield. So it, I, it's just how much longer can you put up with that? How much I mean, can like, you tolerate? come on. Right. Yeah, just give up. Just give up. Just now, you know, getting out. You oh. know, maybe he's getting out. What? What? Oh. Uh, let's see. Oh, maybe he's see. just trying to get some fresh air. But let's see what happens here. Let's see what happens here. I don't want to get off the super double, or be, but I want to get a cleaner shot. Doing what he's doing right there, I don't think is going to be helpful. I think that's just rubbing it more into his eyes. But that's what it's designed for. Uh, you can see some of those deputies, uh, I guess they're talking about how they're going to get this guy into custody. He's still not out of the car. And even if they open up that door, what's going to happen then? So uh, just keep an eye on this. But what a bizarre ending to uh, a, a chase that could have gone so wrong. I'm just happy that... It seems like it's so far it's going to be, it's coming to a, a textbook end almost. Up, oh, he's rolling up the windows. Why? Just go into custody, dude. Come on. Yeah, it, interesting. They approached him now from the other side of the car, right? The driver's side. They, they tried to speak with him, but uh, it seems like he was not interested. Yeah, he's, uh, clearly he's not interested. Now he's got his hands up again, so I just... It, it, but he's that was kind of his thing earlier on, too. It was very cat and mouse. He stopped, he let the deputies get close, and then he drove off. He would stop. So maybe he's kind of playing that same game. You know, he's like, yeah, I give up, I give up. And then they come over there, and he's like, nah, no, I don't. A very bizarre, very bizarre. Is, it doesn't seem like he's speaking, though. It seems like he's just getting fresh air 
Or yep, just sick? getting some fresh air. Yeah, earlier on, he was definitely yelling at the deputies. We, I saw, whoop, well, here's some more pepper balls. It, it, you know, and also, you got to see, they're not shooting them at him. Right. Per se. They're shooting it into the car. Uh, what we just saw right there was one of the helicopters, one of the, I, I don't know if it was California Air Patrol or the, uh, the Sheriff's Department, but that's what just zipped by the screen. Uh, but, yeah, you can see him. He's just trying to get that, uh, get some air right there. I don't know if this would be a good time maybe to use, like, uh, a taser which I, I think that uh, the sheriff's department are using less of or possibly even like what they would call the sandbag or rubber bullets. But it, as long as he can retreat inside that vehicle, I think they're going to stay away from all of that. They want him out of that vehicle and so in, in a place where they can take him into custody. Just this uh, waiting game, the waiting game to see if he's going to make the right decision, come out of here, come out of that vehicle and end this once and for all. I, we all know how this is going to end. Uh, he He's not getting away. That much is clear. We've definitely covered pursuits where the suspect has gotten away. But in this case, it looks like um, he will be taken into custody one way or another. <laughs> That's right, Aroxy. And, and you have a number of deputies out there. You can see a number of those deputies, and they're all down there to help him make that right decision and sooner than later. Uh, you, I'm just kind of wondering if what they're, what they're thinking about right now, this guy right here, I, I'm wondering what that's all about. That, that's some heavy artillery. I, uh, but you know what? That also might be a BB gun. Yes, I, you can see the yellow stock. So that weapon is basically they're using that to break some more windows so that they can get some more gas in there. And that seems to be their plan is just to keep pumping that gas in there until they get this guy out. But he has been pretty resilient. And, you know, with the, with the amount of vaping that he's doing and the amount of smoking that he's got going on, maybe, maybe the maybe that gas or maybe that pepper and that uh, powder is just not as effective uh, because he's so inebriated. But uh, you can see that uh, right there, that deputy, the one, that one, that's the pepper ball gun. Uh, you get you know, folks at home can kind of see what it looks like. Uh, you know, we'll keep an eye on him. We'll see if he, he uses that. But they're not going to shoot it at him. They're going to shoot it around him or try to get those pepper balls into the cab of that vehicle, uh, not actually striking that uh, that suspect. And as, every time you see like a yellow or a green stock. For the law enforcement, those are going to be less than lethal weapons. Uh, so they, you can see that they've got a lot of less than lethal out. I'm sure some of the other deputies have their, their sidearms available just in case that, uh, like you said, we still don't really know. That suspect could reach under his seat and pull out a gun. Uh, hopefully that's not what's going to happen. But right now, law enforcement, they're doing what they can to get this guy out of the car and into cuffs safely. Uh, Stu, um, I'm glad you're explaining the, just the way this works with the pepper balls and, and just the tactics that they're using because uh, this one is a little rare in, in how we're watching it hopefully come to an end soon and as, as peaceful of a manner as possible. But it's interesting that you do say perhaps because he is inebriated, he is able to tolerate everything that they're throwing at him because it does seem like someone who was just sitting there without the alcohol and whatever else is in the system would not be able to tolerate all that. It would be quite irritating. Uh, that stuff is supposedly is extremely irritable. And uh, we've seen it in the past where, you know, they've, They've launched a couple of those pepper balls into a car, and you see the, uh, you know, see that suspect jump out like, like they sent in a, a you know, a, a jar full of bees. Uh, but a lot of other, see, and this is the thing too. They, every time they seem to approach, especially on the driver's side, mm -hmm. he starts to roll up that window. I wonder if uh, what their plan is is to try to break that window. Uh, it, you know, next time he rolls it up so that he won't be able to roll it back up again. You can see the deputies making their approach, trying to get the shot where you can see that suspect as well mm -hmm. but there he he's goes he's rolling roll up. up that window yeah. yeah that that's old school you see it right there yeah. he, that's not electric he's got a crank so uh <laughs> but uh, this and this is what they're worried about this is what this is it this is what they've been so worried about uh -oh. and his behavior right now is not is not what we want to see at all uh, and uh that uh, this is uh what are you doing, dude? What are you doing? Just, 
and just got his foot on the gas there. He's we got that thing, and that tire will blow after a little bit. It's going to yeah. put out a lot of smoke, and then it's just going to it's just going to pop, and that could create some problems as well. If that uh, rubber if it starts flying, a deputy might get injured. But uh, it it kind of shows you though how solid uh, the cruisers are. But if this guy puts this thing in drive, uh, this could end very very poorly. Yep, that's what it looks like. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to push his way back. Um, yeah. Not much success at this point. Not at well, nope. And look at the deputies are doubling it back. up. They got they're another. They got another cruiser. They got another cruiser. So they got two cars uh, right behind that uh, Ford pickup truck right there. So it's not going to go anywhere. Those tires are going to start getting hot. And uh, like I said, that thing could pop. I know it. I've seen it in the past. But it does seem like he's kind of just, uh, he's realizing it's not going anywhere, just making a lot of noise, being uh, just, just being a knucklehead. That's all he's doing right now. He's creating more problems uh, when he could just easily uh, just go into custody. I'm just worried that he might be so inebriated he just pops that thing into drive and launches himself into the wash. I just don't want to see that happen. I, I mean, he could also, it looks like he could maybe go to the right. Uh, I don't know how far he would get. <clears throat> He would probably get stuck yeah. right there. I think he hasn't attempted to come out of his car and just make a run for it at this point. <laughs> you know, running, running is a, it, it, it's, it almost falls under exercise. And uh, this gentleman right here doesn't seem like he gets much exercise. So I think that's off his list of things to do. He just was going to kind of hang out there uh, again with, uh, with, with some sort of vape. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see him pointing to the officers. Uh, so we're just going to keep an eye on what's going on. And again, at least he stopped uh, tr hitting the gas. That, as long as we see those reverse lights on, you know that that vehicle's still in gear. And uh, clearly, he still has the keys. So all these things, the, these are these are definitely. There you go. He just put it back in the park. These are things that the deputies are aware of. They have to deal with. These are parts of the uh, the fluid situation, as it would be that where they're going to have to make these decisions on how they're going to handle this suspect and get him into custody without injury. And uh, it, that was an unusual turn of events, but it kind of shows you how aggressive this guy is. Now tossing more stuff out. He seems to be running out of things to, uh, to inhale inside that vehicle. So possibly, you know, maybe he'll, he'll make that decision here shortly, but uh, that aggressive move is definitely gonna change the plans that any of these deputies had to take that guy into custody. Right, you do see that they have backed off. Um, it seemed for a moment that they were maybe going to approach the vehicle and act uh, upon something, some kind of plan they had, but it looks like because of his behavior now, they, they're trying to figure out what to do next. You know, uh, watching him, you're thinking, the longer this takes, the more things you attempt to do, the worse it's going to be for you because everything is adding up on that rap sheet. You know, definitely. And we've heard other uh, other law enforcement say that, you know, they just go for the big ones. Uh, but a lot of times it, it is exactly what you say, Aroxia. There is somebody that literally is like, oh, and then he did this and oh, and then he did that. And they write all this stuff down and it, it does add up. And depending upon what this suspect has already against him, if he has anything against him already, uh, you know, that's going to add to it when he uh, has his moment in front of a judge uh, in court. Uh, right now, though, that's kind of, there's some more pepper balls, there are more of them coming, and he just keeps leaning out of the car. That seems to be a smart move. I wonder if uh, the deputies could get there quick enough and then maybe as he, like, leans out, help him out the window a little bit. But uh, right now, it seems like they still just want to—they still want to let him make that decision on his own. And uh, you can see he's trying to get some fresh air right there. Uh, but you know, these deputies—if yeah, they bring the dog, that things might change pretty quick. I would guess. Yeah, that's a good point. When do they make that call? Do we know? 
They may have already made that call. Uh, they, you know, the the canine units are not always uh, right nearby. There might have to that uh, canine might have to make his way from a different division or a different area, as it would be for the deputies. Uh, so that might be part of it. But uh, this is probably something that is on their list. And if this goes on much, much longer, they might get SCB in here, the special tactics units, you know, their version of SWAT, and uh, they might they might come up with something very quickly and just. Get this guy into custody but right now you just got a stubborn guy won't get out of the truck and uh, there's very he's got no place to go but uh, the deputies want him to they they have a place for him to go but we just have to get him there that's the problem for those who are maybe just joining and wondering what is going on, the time is 1.33, and we did cut into regular scheduled programming to bring you this. This was a reckless DUI driver pursuit. We've been on this since, I would say, 12.55, but it began a little bit before that. So uh, basically, this uh, driver in Compton, it began in Compton and stayed in the Compton area, uh, refused to stop. It was relatively a slow pursuit, but he was driving recklessly, at times obeying the signal lights, at times not. Uh, several pit maneuvers were made. Uh, two of them we witnessed on the air. One of them, Stu said, had happened prior to us uh, bringing this coverage to you. So at least three pit maneuvers, which failed. And he did get away, but ended up coming into this neighborhood and getting stuck right there where he doesn't have much option um, unless he wants to get out of the vehicle and just end this. But this is where we are. They've shot several rounds of pepper balls into the vehicle. They have attempted to, I think, speak with him from afar, of course. Um, he's refusing to come out. We did witness uh, him inhaling what we're assuming may be nitrous from a balloon as he was behind that vehicle and even when he came to a stop he seems to be smoking some kind of a vaping device perhaps um, just doing everything possible not to exit the vehicle sticking his head out of that window there you see him smoking right there as i say uh, sticking his head out that window for fresh air because that car is filling up with um, with that gas you see the deputies once again it looks like trying to approach him and as they do that he's once again trying to back up Stu this is the yeah. second time he's tried to do this but those police cruisers are pretty steady they're not moving yeah, those police cruisers are not going to be going anywhere, and I think he's just kind of doing that to keep those deputies away from the vehicle. Um, and they are doing the right thing when they when that starts happening. They just kind of back off. Uh, I'm just curious to see if if he does lose a tire, uh, what's gonna what's gonna happen after that? You know, uh, if he keeps uh, keeps hammering it like that, those tires are gonna get hot eventually, and and he's he's tearing into that rubber so and not that we're concerned about his tire wear we're concerned about that tire exploding under the pressure and the heat which we have seen in the past so uh, right now the deputies they're gonna stay there every time they they seem to approach he uh, he puts that thing in reverse and that kind of pushes them back which is sad in itself but you know again these uh, these the law enforcement they have to work within a certain parameter and safety is the biggest one and they have to keep their deputies safe and they have to keep that suspect safe as well. The waiting continues, Stu. The wait continues. Uh, what time did this pursuit begin? I know we came on the air about 12.55 or so, but it happened a little bit after 12.30, is that right? Stu's probably getting some information right now. We'll let him... Um, get that information before he continues to uh, fill us in on what's going on. But there you see all of the deputies, um, the number of police cruisers there behind this vehicle uh, trying to decide what to do next. I uh, got you guys. Yeah, they are definitely trying to figure out what they're going to do next down there, and they are making plans. These uh, deputies aren't just uh, biding their time down there, and we've actually seen them being very aggressive to try to get that suspect out of that vehicle in a safe way. Uh, they still have uh, they still have some pepper balls. They still have some CS gas. Now it is just the uh, how are they going to get that into deliver that into the the cab of that truck uh, in a, in a safe manner? So uh, you know they can't just walk up to it because. 
because it seems like every time they try to do that now, he puts it in reverse, starts revving that engine, and the, you know, again, safety. They have to be safe. So they're uh, now they're kind of at an arm's length, as it would be. But at some point, this suspect is going to have to give up. He's going to go into cuffs. There's really very little that can happen. Uh, you can see some of those deputies, they've got those spike strips. I don't know if that's their plan. Maybe they're thinking to throw those spike strips under that tire to help uh, flatten it. Uh, they're making their move again. I'm going to stay a little wider, not that it's for the uh, suspects, uh, but it's just uh, because every time we seem to go in that tight like that, the, the picture gets a little degraded, and then we have those other issues. But uh, maybe that's what they were doing. Maybe they just wanted to toss those spike strips there just in case uh, that uh, vehicle gets get pushes those uh, cruisers out of the way. I haven't even seen those cars move, Roxy, have you? No, I haven't. I haven't. I, I have. I've been watching, but no, I haven't. I was just thinking about the other parked vehicles there on that street. Thinking about if I'm the owner of one of those vehicles, uh, I'm watching this thing closely as well, and really regretting parking where I've parked. <laughs> Yeah, that would be something to see if you see some of these uh, homeowners making their way out to their cars and being like, "Excuse me, I'm going to take my car out of here." Yeah. I, I don't think that's going to. I don't think that's going to happen right now. But uh, it, it is really curious. These uh, these deputies, they're just uh, they are they are relentless, and you really got to give them their gold star and their their one ups for this because look at that now making that approach again, and you know. Oh, this time, oh, not worried right about, up the, to the window. about any of that. Right up to the yep, window. Right through, and there he goes. He just kind of tossed it out the other side. Uh, but you saw also those deputies were, they threw those spike strips down. Yes. So they are concerned that they might be, this guy might be able to get free. So it, we'll see what happens now in the next minute or two if those spike strips get sucked underneath the, the tire and if they bring those, make those tires go flat. Sorry about that again. I, but, uh, but you can see that, you know, these guys, they've got a plan. They're trying to get this guy just to give up. Right now, I'd like to see him give up as well, but it seems to continue on. He's uh, now trying to get some more fresh air. But uh, you got to wonder, if you spray that stuff like right on him when they throw those containers in there, if some of that got like onto his shirt or onto his face, that has just got to be uh, beyond uh, irritable. And uh, But it, we can't really see it but I wonder if he's starting to, you know, starting to water up, if his eyes are starting to burn. They've got to be. I mean, my gosh, my eyes are almost burning just watching what's going on up here. Yeah, he's able to tolerate quite an awful lot. It seems like no matter what they do, he just keeps keeps going. He's very stubborn. But you know what I noticed in, in this most recent approach by the officers? Do you see how they came at a wider angle? They actually kind of went around the other car and made their way over rather than right up against the police cruiser up to the truck? Definitely, and I think that was probably to maybe to get his attention or try to draw his attention to them so those other deputies could put those spike strips underneath the wheel. That might have been the plan right there, or it might have just been the, just the, the safest way to approach that vehicle. Like I said, if he's flooring it and those tires are spinning, uh, you just don't want that tire to explode, and it, 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 it could really cause some injury. And again, it's all about safety. I, I can't say it enough, but uh, you can see him out there, you know, trying to make conversation with some of these deputies. Uh, in the end, he's going to go into custody. It's just a matter of when. And right now, it's like, how are you going to get? You know, he's got. He's probably thinking, hey, I got the one up on these guys. I'm just not going to come out of my car. But uh, he's got to at some point. I mean, they've got. You know, I, I don't want to say they've got all the time in the world, but at this point, they'll wait for him to get out of the car or be forced out of that car. He's not going anywhere. It's pretty clear he's not getting away. Um, so he's just killing time at this point um, and just wasting a lot of resources and ener energy. Definitely, and uh, of course we've been watching him. Uh, you know what, whatever he was doing with the balloon, if it was nitrous, whatever. Uh, you know, clearly he went through that. We watched him smoke uh, at least uh, at least two vape containers or whatever that was, those were. And so, and it does seem like he might be. Uh, just as soon as I said it, there's another one. So he still he still has uh, something going on down there. But uh, you can see him uh, definitely talking to the deputies. That's uh, at least something. I wonder if the deputies are communicating back, basically probably just saying, just give it up, just come out of the car. You know, this is, this is over. Uh, but uh, right now, he's just kind of just sitting there.
just being stubborn about uh, about going into custody. And just still smoking, whatever that is. Maybe it's a vape pen or whatever, but it's just amazing, amazing how casually he's approaching the situation. But again, we have to keep in mind that uh, he's not 100% uh, there in the sense that he's a wanted DUI driver and who, who, whatever else he may be on, we don't know. And again, it doesn't see, you know, we can't assume anything. We haven't seen him display a weapon, but we have no idea and neither do these officers. So you always have to be extra cautious and extra careful. You have no idea what this person has inside of that vehicle and what they're capable of. And also, when it comes to a point where uh, they have nothing to lose, that is the most dangerous of them all. That, you know, that's right. And a lot of times I talk to, uh, talk to folks about, you know, pursuits and they say things. It's like, why don't they just go up to the car and get them out of there? I, why are they standing around? And, you know, my answer is always is like, you know what, that's easy to say when you're at home or, you know, wherever you are watching this on your, on your mobile device or, or at, in a comfortable living room. It's not your, it, it's, you're not going to lose anything. And, and if it was you, would you do it? And a lot of times that really just kind of shuts them down. A lot of folks would be like, yeah, well, maybe not. And it's, that's the same thing. It's these deputies, you know, nobody wants to get hurt. And of course, they just, they're looking at it like that too. We don't know what this guy's got going on. We don't know if he's got a weapon in there. We'd also know, and it could be a knife. It doesn't even have to be a gun. So they want to take him into custody the way they're trained to, the way it is the safest for everybody involved. That's the way they want to do it. And how they do that is with that suspect out of the vehicle and his hand in the places where we can see them or they can see them and they can take him into custody without any incidents. What, is, that another, is that another balloon in his hand? Is that a blue balloon? Is that what I'm seeing? I don't know. I hope it's not. That's all I got to say. It might be, it might be a water bottle uh, or a balloon. And uh, yeah, this is just, it's just getting more and more bizarre. And uh, just, you know, it, it really is getting to the point where I'm sure the, the deputies or the watch commander is probably making some phone calls. Maybe they're going to get SCB over here. You know, not to say that the uh, deputies that are here aren't doing a fantastic job, but uh, clearly that suspect's still inside the vehicle, and maybe they need, uh, need people that are trained differently that can come in here and take charge of the situation and get this guy into custody. But I still worry that he's sitting in that precarious spot where if he puts that thing in drive, this could, uh, this could go in another direction very, very quickly. I don't know why these deputies are backing off a little bit. You just saw them all kind of move backwards. So maybe they've got some other plants uh, working right there. But uh, we, the only thing we can do right now is uh, watch and wait. They're not really talking that much on the scanner. We know the radios because most of these guys are here. So as we're watching this, um, we're just waiting to see what happens next because as these officers have attempted several times to approach the vehicle, they've had some success of uh, firing those pepper bolts into the car as well as throwing some of these gas canister inside the vehicle. But uh, as you may have witnessed, uh, the driver, the man right there, just picks it right up and throws it right out the window and doesn't seem to be all too concerned with, the, with anything. And it's very hard to get him irritated enough, agitated enough to end this and come out of the vehicle and comply with the officer's orders. Um, quite stubborn, I guess you could say, or someone who just doesn't care or is maybe not really all there to be listening or following orders or taking, uh, taking the time to really think about what they're doing. Obviously, they've come to this point. But Stu... Um, as we watch right now, you mentioned, you know, they may bring in a canine. That might be something they do. Maybe that may be their best bet to get this guy's attention and really get some action. It's something that we're waiting to see if that happens. You said that perhaps the canine unit has been called, but it takes a while to get there. It might not be something they're interested in using, although sometimes it's the most effective thing to do. 
Uh, definitely, and uh, that's the thing. You know, the, the sheriff's department they've got a they've got a big bag of tricks uh, to to find some way to get this guy out of there. You were talking about the irritating that driver enough to get him out of there. I'm starting to get irritated enough there where I'm thinking we should try to do something to get him out. But uh, right now he's just kind of uh, the, you know he's having his moment in the sun as it would be. I uh, you know the, that thing is running, but are we watching him rolling up and down the windows? I wonder if it has air conditioning. But uh, it, it's definitely warm down there. You can see him co constantly rubbing his eyes. So, you know, hopefully it's just going to get to the point where they want, you know, he's going to want to get out of that car. But how are they going to get that to that point? That's the tough one. And uh, right now he, he's just sitting there. He's biding his time. The deputies, they'll have, uh, they'll have, you know, they'll have the opportunity to try something else. But right now it's a lot of waiting and that waiting is just gonna kinda go on until that uh, suspect makes that decision or these deputies can convince him to uh, get out of that vehicle. I haven't heard anything about a uh, crisis negotiator, which sometimes they bring out to one of these where that, you know, somebody will start talking to that suspect and maybe be able just to coax him out of there, say the right things, figure out what he wants. I mean, right now, a bottle of water probably would get, would get me out of there. It's got to be pretty hot inside that truck. And with all that, all that irritation, in, in there and on his face and stuff, you just got to wonder why is, it, why is he just sitting in there? Just come out. Just come out. Bring this thing to an end. And as far as the dog goes, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that the, the dog is on its way. But right now, I keep looking and checking, and there has been no other vehicles added to the uh, street out here. So I'm not sure if that's in their plan right now. Hopefully it is. Hopefully it is. I'm glad we're not seeing uh, people uh, come out of their homes or, you know, anyone kind of coming in to see what's going on. Uh, people these days, everyone comes out with their cell phones. So I'm glad to see that that is not happening in this case. And in a way, as I'm watching this, Stu, I'm thinking, uh, <laughs> sounds silly to say, but it's the best case scenario because when you have someone like this who obviously has no interest in uh, complying or giving up, he could have been still out on the street driving around and putting a lot of people in danger. At least at this point, he's just boxed in. You know, Aroxia, that's right, and and his safety, or his safety is not as paramount as an innocent person that he may hit with that vehicle. But you're definitely correct with that. At least he is not out driving around, getting information from our uh, from our station that what he's sucking on down there is an actual nitrous tank. So he is ah. uh, he's, he's basically getting hits right off of the bottle. Um, you know, I gotta be. I just call it like it is. I really have no idea how dangerous that is, but we have covered uh, fatalities in the past where people have been inside of a, inside of a vehicle where they've been, uh, been basically sucking the uh, CO2 gas right out of that uh, tank, and we have covered fatalities like that. So I just wonder, uh, you know, if this guy really knows what he's doing, if he's taking those, you know, he's taking a lot of chances. He clearly uh, has been all afternoon, but uh, to really just, you know, take those hits right off the bottle like that, I'm, you know, again, not a thousand percent on all of that, but like I said, we have covered fatalities where people have died from doing exactly exactly what he's doing right there. So, uh, you know, we've got the first responders here if something like that happens. But again, we just, I don't want to see uh, anybody get hurt. I just want to see this guy go into custody and bring this thing to an end. So the nitrous tank, the nitrous balloons, you have him smoking, appears to be vaping. You have the DUI, which is what this whole thing started, why we started following this pursuit, uh, why officers started going after him was his reckless driving, and he's a wanted DUI driver. So all of these things uh, taken into consideration. And again, although we haven't seen it, doesn't mean it's not a possibility. We don't know. There could be some kind of a some kind of a knife, some kind of a gun. Who knows what this person's capable of? I also wonder if, um, you know, you talk about crisis negotiators being there or being on scene or trying to speak with him. Would, would they be able to also call him on the phone? I haven't seen him use his cell phone. I don't even know if he has one, but they do sometimes contact some of these suspects in these circumstances and try to at least come into communication with them over the phone. 
That's right, and, and yeah, he has, and we haven't seen him have a cell phone at all. A lot of times we'll see these suspects take that cell phone out and kind of show it around. Maybe they're, uh, you know, on some sort of live social media or whatever, but we've watched them do that. You're right, I have not seen any kind of social media or any kind of cell phone in this guy's hand the entire time that he's been here. The only thing we've been watching him do is consume things that uh, will get him, get him high. That's really the only thing we've been watching the entire time. Uh, I'm trying to get that cleaner shot of that uh, nitrous container. I when he when he uh, just now when he put his head inside, you can clearly see that is exactly what it is. He has that sitting on his lap down there, and he's just continuing to uh, to to hit that bottle. Uh, how long that's going to last? How much is in there? What it's going to do to him? Uh, you know. We're gonna we're gonna find out. That's basically the only thing I can say right now. Uh, these deputies, they're all kind of they're out of uh, all their less than lethal ideas, and now they're basically just doing this stop and wait, and uh, that's all they can do. Maybe they're hoping that he'll run out of that nitrous, and then just you know give give up then. But uh, as it stands. He's sitting in there and just kind of getting high while these officers, these deputies, are waiting and fight for that moment or that opportunity that they can take him into custody safely. Upon one of the approaches, when they did approach the vehicle, it, it, we did see them throw what appeared to be spike strips underneath that car. So we assume those spike strips are, in fact, underneath that truck. Definitely, and I can... Uh, yeah, we can see we're getting information that maybe we should move Sky Fox around, but if we move Sky Fox around, we'll lose this spot. But we can move around a little bit. I'm going to give that to Olivier. If you want to move us around, we can. And uh, Olivier is at the tiller today of Sky Fox, so we'll move around just a little bit, see if we can get a different angle. We've we've been sitting here the entire time, but uh, you know you can just see him in there, you know, hitting that bottle, and it is dangerous. Uh, it is it is dangerous. There's some uh, some misnomer of it being explosive. The gas itself is not explosive. It has to be combined with something to uh, to get that kind of explosion. Or the, like when you see it used in uh, in movies or uh, racing it it combines with the gasoline it's it, nit nitrous itself as I understand it not even flammable so uh, that's not part of the problem but you can really kind of see the bottle right now in his arms and uh, that's basically what he's doing he's uh, he's hitting that vape and then he's hitting that bottle and then he's hitting that vape and then he's hitting that bottle and uh, the deputies they're kind of at a spot where all they can do is sit and wait this out. And uh, right in like here, Olivier, pushing, I think it's probably it look, a good look, spot. Look, he's starting up again. He's trying to reverse once again, push against those police cruisers. He's been unsuccessful yep. thus far, but he's not giving up. Yeah, he's not giving up, and it. And I wish he would. I wish this would just come to an end. Uh, come to an end peacefully but uh, right now he's really revving that engine up and he's just uh, just trying to to back it up it, it's amazing those tires haven't given up already uh, just stopped it and uh, ooh, I, I I just hope he doesn't try to move forward any farther that's uh, that's that's my big concern right now but uh, you saw him he just took he basically just took it out of reverse uh, just sitting there in a the truck it seems like you know, we read a lot of uh, we read a lot of body language up here in Sky Fox, and it does seem like he's almost starting to do that. You know, uh, maybe I should just give up. You know, type of thing. Hopefully, he's starting to realize that he's got no place to go, and uh, there's no way he's going to get out of this. The only way he's going to get out is uh, is like that right there. No, no, uh, is uh, is is basically getting out of that vehicle and just putting getting himself into custody. Unfortunately, I feel as though he's not really thinking about any of these things right now. He's just going, living in the moment of whatever he's on. Um, logic doesn't seem to be a consideration in this case. But again, Stu, I'm, you know, someone like this who doesn't really seem concerned about others' safety or his own. Uh, the good news is he's not on the street driving around and uh, police cruisers and us following the, this. That could have really put a lot of people in danger. So, uh, you know, the best case scenario, I suppose. 
Uh, you know, uh, Aroxia, that, that is definitely the silver lining here. There's no doubt about it. And thank you for pointing that out for, for anybody, for, to me and also everybody that's listening right now. That suspect is not on the streets. He is wedged in here at the end of the street out here on Poplar. And, uh, and he really, he has no place to go. And the deputies are doing their job. They've, they're keeping people safe. They got this guy off of the streets. They obviously knew what he was doing when they tried to stop him. That might have been one of the reasons why they re-engaged this pursuit is because they realized that he was, you know, in the act of getting high while driving and they uh, just were weighing the public safety against uh, this this guy's safety. So they, they re-engaged that pursuit to keep uh, the public safe. In the end, he wedged himself in here. This is at a wash, if anybody's just joining us, at the end of Poplar near the cross of Wilmington, city of Compton. And uh, you can see it. That, you know, that fence is what's keeping him from going over the edge if he puts that thing in drive. Uh, he's been trying to back up those cruisers. That one right there, they, they put it up against his bumper, and uh, he's just been spinning his wheels. And just to make sure, they doubled it up. They put that other uh, the other cruiser behind that one. So those two cars are, are basically keeping that pickup truck from moving. Uh, a lot of these deputies, they all have their weapons out. They're ready to take this guy into custody. They're just waiting for that opportunity, that tiny window of opportunity, hopefully, where he decides to open that door, get out, or we'll see. Maybe they'll find out another way to entice him to get out of that vehicle. All right, as we watch this, I wonder if we can uh, re-rack some of that video uh, to show our viewers the pit maneuvers, which were attempted unsuccessfully. Great, there we have it. On your left, you see what's happening right now. On your right, you see the pit maneuvering happening right there. This was at an intersection. It was not successful. That suspect weaved his way through all of those police cruisers. You will see in a moment, goes over the barrier there, keeps on going. We'll follow that, and then it looked as though there was some spike strips that officers were trying to place there on the ground. There, they back off. He misses it. He keeps going. We get a shot of him in a moment where he is um, inhaling a, a balloon, getting some nitrous there. There you see it behind the wheel, and at that moment, another pit maneuver happens. Again, not successful driving the opposite direction, going over the barriers once more. We thought for a moment maybe he'd get stuck, but that was not the case. Kept on going past all those police cruisers on his way back as he backtracks into this neighborhood, drives around. Um, we think, does he know where he's going? Does he have any idea? Is he lost? Appears as though he did not know where he was going because he's going to turn in a moment, make a right and end up in this dead end area where we are right now with that wash in front of him and he's stuck, stuck right there. The reason the police cruisers are right up against that truck is because he put the car in reverse and tried to back his way out. Um, obviously, he was not successful, so they're right up against him. He's tried several times to do that. Uh, several times those officers have approached the vehicle uh, they've fired pepper bullets into the vehicle. They've tried to throw gas canisters into the car. He's just casually grabbed them and thrown them right back out, sitting there with that nitrous tank in his lap, vaping, it appears, smoking something. It looks like a vape pen. Um, and just sitting there and killing time and just waiting. They did approach the vehicle at one point, and it did look like they threw some spike strips underneath the vehicle, which you cannot see. It was on the other side, the passenger side of the vehicle, where they threw what appeared to be some spike strips in, ca in case he tries to pull some kind of miraculous move out of there. But he really has nowhere to go. So there you have it. All of those police cruisers behind him. Officers there with their guns drawn, just waiting, waiting to see what they're going to do. Um, the safety, of course, of the people who live in the area are, is a concern, but also his safety. That is something that Stu's pointed out several times that they also take into account. And, and we have to remember, we don't know and we can't assume that he doesn't have a weapon. He could very well have a weapon. Um, we haven't seen one displayed and no indication of that, but uh, this is definitely something we don't know. The officers don't know, so uh, you just have to wait uh, because 
concern is for everyone's safety who's down there right now. Uh, Stu, one more time, just let us know this exact area we're at right now. Well, we are in the city of Compton. This is going to be Poplar Street near the cross of Wilmington. Wilmington is going to be the major street at the end of this cul-de-sac right there. And actually, they have uh, Wilmington shut down. I just did that wide shot. I just noticed they have some uh, cruisers out there. So they actually have Wilmington shut down as well in both directions. Uh, you can see Poplar comes to a dead end here at the wash. Uh, somebody had moved some of those... Uh, barriers out of the way so that pickup truck actually had a moment there where we thought he might be trying to drive on that bike lane that runs along the wash but he didn't he just kind of came to a stop now those deputies have been making every effort they've broken out a lot of the windows they've been using the pepper balls they've been using cs or the gas containers putting them in the car like you said we've actually seen them actually pick one up and just toss it out of the car at least twice one through the back window one out through the driver's side window but they're doing what they have been doing what they can just to irritate this driver enough or the suspect enough just to get out of that darn car uh, but in the end he's been um grandstanding coming out of the window uh, every standing up and yelling at the deputies uh, basically just being uh, just being stubborn is probably the, the most polite way of saying it and in the end now he actually has a, uh, a nitrous container that he has sitting right there and you can see him again uh, just uh, doing what he's been doing for this entire time sucking on some of that gas getting inebriated getting high and uh, and it's just been a waiting game and uh, I, I wonder if he wants to try to use up that entire canister I, again not really familiar with it don't know how exactly that that that's going to work it, it, but uh, I can imagine an entire canister probably pretty dangerous and uh, you can see a lot of these deputies they're uh, out there, weapons drawn, but they've kind of run out of ways to uh, try to entice him out of there. They are waiting. We do see a number of deputies over here as well. Uh, we've been trying to see if uh, maybe we can get some information. Are they calling in SEB? That's their version of SWAT, possibly a dog. But uh, it seems to be right now a wait and see type of situation. And uh, of course, that uh, suspect, you know, He's uh, the deputies had time on their hands, but that deputy, I mean, that's uh, suspect definitely using up the last moments of his uh, freedom before he goes into custody, uh, trying to get as high as he can. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And again, we kept mentioning that maybe they would deploy a canine unit, uh, but we haven't seen that happen. It's been quite a while. Uh, Stu, we started following this on air about, I think I want to say 12.55, but when did this begin? Do you know, was it around 12.30 or so? It's been a while. <clears throat> It, it has been a while. We were listening to it. I have to give a shout out to uh, to Moy and uh, some of those scanner groups out there. They were getting a hold of me, basically saying, "Hey, there's a pursuit in Compton," and uh, I tuned it in. And sure enough. It was there, and uh, that uh, suspect playing a lot of cat and mouse, uh, stopping, starting. There was a moment where we did, we were like, ah, maybe we're not going because he kept stopping. Uh, but it, it, at one point, we realized that he was just doing that stop and go thing. So we got in the helicopter and we got here as quickly as possible. Uh, we picked it up. It was, uh, it was, I believe, it was on Rosecrans or Wilmington. I think it was on Wilmington. It was definitely on Wilmington when we first saw it, and he made that turn onto Rosecrans. So he stayed in. The the Carson Compton area for the entire time of that chase and like you said kind of led us to believe that possibly he's from here maybe he is and he just doesn't know this area but I uh, made that wrong turn came to this dead end and this is where we've been sitting ever since those deputies running out of ideas on how to get him out of that car but uh, right now time is on their side but that suspect definitely using it up as quickly as possible. Yeah, it's been a while we've been watching this and not much has happened in the sense that, uh, you know, the suspect's refusing to come out and everyone's just waiting to see what the next move will be. Since we're past the top of the hour here, it's 2.06. I just want to give everyone um, a little update in case they just tuned in as to why we're watching this standoff with a suspected DUI driver. Also, Stu, uh, Christine Devine is walking into the studio and she's going to take over in a moment. So I want to fill her in on what's going on as well. So if you are just joining us and, and Christine, as we watch this, this uh, DUI driver wanted for driving recklessly 
Compton Carson area. So Compton Carson area is where it started and pretty much that's where it stayed. It stayed in this area. Uh, the driver was driving rather slowly. It wasn't a fast moving pursuit by any means. And for a while in the beginning, it seemed like this driver was complying, stopping at lights, stopping at stop signs. And it was very odd. But then things started to change. And you know what, as we watch this, if we can pull up the pit maneuver video so that people can see what led up to this moment, um, things started to change. There you see on your right, this is when they attempted a pit maneuver. It was not successful. He drove through, weaved his way through those police cruisers, just weaved his way goes over that center divider, kept on going, so he keeps on going. There were officers straight ahead, you'll see in a moment, will move out of the way because he was coming at them. It looked as though they were trying to put some spike strips there, but they were unsuccessful and he avoided that. As he's going, we notice, wait a minute, is that a balloon and is he sucking on nitrous? In fact, you'll see a close-up in a moment. And yes, behind the wheel is a white balloon. And that is what it appears that he was doing um, right behind that wheel. And that is when there will be a second pit maneuver attempt. You'll see in a moment. There it is. You see the balloon. Copy it's on. quite Didn't confusing. You tell, uh, tell and there it goes. That's that second pit maneuver. Again. He just drives right on by those police cruisers, weaves his way, goes over that center divider. There came a point that we thought, oh, maybe he's going to get stuck. No, did oh not get gosh. stuck. Kept on Littering. going, kept on going, passing all those police cruisers. Turns there, makes a left, goes into this neighborhood. Now he's in a neighborhood, and oftentimes with pursuit suspects, we think, you know, they go to an area they're familiar with. Perhaps he knows where he is since this started and it seems to be ending in Compton. But no, uh, because of what happens next, he comes right here to this point and gets stuck. That is a wash in front of him. It's a dead end. There's nowhere to go. Those police cruisers have lined up behind this vehicle. And we're at a point now where for over an hour now, we're just waiting to see what happens. They did fire pepper pepper balls into that car, pepper bullets. Uh, they did blow out that back window of the truck. They did approach the vehicle uh, several times and threw in gas canisters where that suspect casually picked those gas canisters up and just threw them out the window. Then we saw him, um, it appeared to be vaping or smoking, just hanging out from the window there, getting fresh air because obviously it's irritable with everything they've thrown into that car, which doesn't seem to bother him a whole lot because he's still there. And then there's a nitrous tank on his lap, a blue nitrous tank, which he's using in addition to what appears to be a vape or some kind of device he's smoking. They approached his vehicle from the side no luck. They threw some spike strips actually underneath the car while it was parked, just in case he tries to make a getaway somehow, which doesn't seem like a possibility. Uh, he has put the car in reverse several times. He has attempted to back up, but the police cruiser has just been there. There you see him. There you see him. Just taking a hit. Wow. The police cruiser is right up against his vehicle. So every time he tries to back up, he doesn't get very far. So there are two police cruisers now that that's not allowing him to go anywhere. So this is where we are, Christine. Um, very, very good wrap up there. Th that yeah, you know, I'm trying to get you caught up to yes, speed. Absolutely. At this point, we're just here waiting to see what I happens see that. next. And that's... That's that's where we're at. Well, I know you've been here since good day LA, so we'll let you clear out Thank and, and you. carry on with your day. Appreciate I'm going to take it, it over here okay. uh, with your your brilliantly done recap. There we have Stu up in Sky Fox still. Thank you, Stu, for staying with us here, uh, which could be a very long afternoon as we continue to sit here. Uh, Stu, this guy, how long do you think this guy can wait this out? Uh, you know what? I don't even want to guess because, you know what? Maybe I should guess because whenever I guess something, the opposite happens. He's going to be here till 8 o'clock tonight, Christine. Great, uh, oh, maybe great, this great. Maybe he'll just get out of the car right now. Uh, it has been very frustrating. And, I mean, frustrating for us is one thing. But <clears throat> these deputies that have been here uh, since the beginning...
following that vehicle. Uh, that one that you see right there, I believe the uh, the one that actually is right behind it actually has some damage. That was the one that was doing the pit maneuvers earlier on. And so <clears throat> that drive, you know, that deputy really just was, you know, in it for the win and wanted to take that suspect into custody. Uh, in the end, you saw it, he made his way right here. They are still concerned that he could injure himself by driving into the wash. That's one of the reasons why they're not being overly aggressive and just making that attempt to take that suspect into custody on purpose, on accident, whatever could happen. That vehicle still runs, and they and that driver still has the keys. We've seen it in the past. He'll put it in reverse when the deputies get too close and just floor it and, you know, spin those tires. Uh, but, the, you know, if he accidentally puts it into drive, this is what could happen right there. They don't want to see that either. And they're also concerned that uh, we saw while we were doing that swap right there and Aroxia was doing that wonderful recap, this house right here, some uh, the deputies were actually evacuating a family. Uh, we did see a fa what we believe a male, a female, and some small children making their way out of that home. So they are concerned that this still could have some end that may not be as favorable as they would hope. So right now, it is a wait and see. Uh, is there a possibility that they're going to bring in the dog? Possibly. Uh, but you'd think that dog would have been here by now. Maybe they're going to call an SEB. That's their version of SWAT. But at any rate, it is a lot of waiting right now as we're watching that suspect just refusing to get out of that pickup. Yeah, there really is no scientific method to determine when this is going to end. I tried to put you on the spot there. You gave it a good guess. Uh, <laughs> So here we are watching this standoff, deputies there with their guns drawn. Uh, you have to wonder about the state of mind of this driver here who's just sitting there with obviously nowhere to go in that vehicle. So does the person just wait this out until they're hungry, bored, have to go to the bathroom, etc.? Uh, how much is what he's inhaling there uh, affecting his judgment? And... Yeah. He's not been on the phone. You haven't seen him make any phone calls to anyone, Stu? <clears throat> We haven't seen a phone at all. Roxy had pointed that out a little bit earlier on, and they have not seen a phone at all. We've just been watching him uh, take those uh, hits off of that nitrous container earlier on. He had that balloon. Uh, perhaps, uh, the, you know, the uh, I don't know, maybe in the in the hustle or in the, the breaking of the windows, that balloon was broken, but he has resorted to what we're seeing right there. The deputies, uh, you can see them... Uh, making their way around the neighborhood. We've been, uh, in, in earlier on, we saw a lot of deputies, maybe not that many sergeants, because these guys really, really were working to get that guy out of that vehicle. Uh, they were using everything they had. They were breaking out the windows. They were making an approach. Uh, they were actually, we saw them, you know, hand hold and toss into that vehicle, um, CS containers, you know, like a handheld container of gas, uh, trying to get that suspect to get out of that car. In the end, uh, two of those containers, we actually saw him grab and throw out, one through the back window, one through that driver's side window. We also know that those windows are not electric, and the only reason I point that out is, you know, if the vehicle is disabled, maybe he can't get that window up and down. Those are crank windows. So mm. even if that car isn't on, uh, as soon as you see these deputies making an approach, he, he starts rolling up that window in the old school you see that hand crank starting to move uh, but there is some communication what it is I can't really say uh, you know maybe it's just profanity maybe it's uh, something other than uh, but in the end everybody just hopes that this guy gets out of the car brings this thing to an end uh, these deputies are down there uh, you know clearly they have reached out to their supervisors hopefully there are some plans in the works maybe something bigger and better might come out here and they can uh, really uh, deploy some CS gas uh, or they, that gas, that irritant, into that vehicle. But uh, until that happens, it is a lot of waiting. And you can even see that uh, you can, you know, we can't hear what's going on down there. So we watch body language. And that body language right there is, is, is vaguely, I'm really starting to get bored. And uh, maybe that's, that will be the catalyst to just make him make that decision to like, okay, this is over, let me get out of the car. But nothing, nothing has happened to really point in that direction at all. We well, watched this guy play cat and mouse with these, uh, with these deputies all afternoon already. Yeah, taking a, a swig off that tank there, that nitrous tank. Uh, 
Yeah, look, I don't, I'm not a nitrous expert. I don't know how that works. I don't know what that does to the brain necessarily when it comes to your judgment in a situation like this. Yes. Um, obviously, with nowhere to go except into a wash, the driver's not moving that vehicle anywhere, completely boxed in by law enforcement there. Uh, you all had said it. time is on the side of law enforcement right now because you don't have people endangered. You don't have pedestrians in the way. You don't have other motorists in the way. Obviously, there are homeowners there to the back, but they can stay to the back of all of this. So I'm reading that pepper balls were fired into the cab of the vehicle, breaking the portion of the rear window. So if people are watching and they're thinking, why isn't law enforcement doing something? Well, they have done that move already. Uh, we did show earlier with Aroxia on coverage here of the two uh, pit maneuvers, attempts at that. That didn't stop him. Look at the people there. Uh, it, it looks like somebody from the community walking away there, perhaps residents there trying to get out of harm's way and go about their day, whatever business they have to handle. Keep in mind, it is about 2.17 now here in Los Angeles. We know we have a lot of people who watch from other states, even overseas when we're online, on the web, on Fox 11. And people are wondering, what's going on here in Southern California? Okay, so this started in the Compton-Carson area. And here we are with this standoff. Uh, Stu, you've been on since around close to 1 o'clock, following this since around 12.30. And here we now coming up close to 2.30, where school is going to let out. Families will start coming home from work, who work those traditional 9 to 5 uh, type of hours. And people are going to want to get into their homes in that neighborhood. I'm wondering how far backed up how far blocked off is this street oh there you go right there okay a whole neighborhood yeah. right there affected with the street blocked off all of those homeowners all of those residents um having issues perhaps getting into their neighborhood with their cars on foot are they locked into their homes sheltering in place there are they wanting to come or go and they just can't um, it's a problem if you live in those homes right there well, you know, Christine, they, what you saw right there was uh, they're doing evacuations. They're actually, uh, deputies are going in and door knocking some of these homes and uh, asking these folks to uh, to exit their homes. And, and that's what we saw. We saw they, when some people from this greenhouse uh, just moments ago, you pointed them out. And just before that, we saw a, a family leave this house right here. Also, what we've been noticing uh, just from Sky Fox is, you know, you, you see a lot of these deputies, they're all in their greens. They got Got their uniforms on down there but all of a sudden now we have this uh, officer uh, that's not in a uniform so that would venture to say that that is a sergeant or somebody with a higher rank somebody making some decisions uh, we've been I've been watching him and, and hand motions uh, basically talking with and getting a briefing from the the deputies that have been here doing an amazing job trying to get that guy out of that vehicle so perhaps uh, he's he's been on the phone he's been on his radio so maybe they are are making a plan maybe they are coming up with something to uh, get uh, SEB out here or some other other means to get that uh, person out of the car it, we keep hoping that he will just make that decision on his own but I really don't think that's going to happen just because of the fact that he's been cat and mousing these uh, deputies the entire time uh, we've been aware of this pursuit earlier on when we were listening that's what we were hearing we heard him oh he stopped he stopped the doors open up oh, now he's going again he stopped you know and and that's what what they were seeing earlier on uh, as far as what that does to you I also was saying the same thing I'm just not so I'm not that familiar uh, I know that we've covered fatalities in the past from uh, nitrous oxide, especially being uh, ingested inside of a vehicle, inside of a closed area. This one is not a closed area anymore. That rear window has been broken out. You can clearly see he's got that with, you know, the driver's side window down. So, uh, you know, how is this going to end? Well, it's going to end with that uh, suspect in cuffs. But when is it going to end? That seems to be the big question. Are we going to have to wait till he uh, runs out of uh, things to inebriate him? Or are the deputies going to you know, basically bring his party to an end? We just don't know right now. But we can clearly see uh, a lot of motion down there. These poor deputies have been out there with their weapons out probably for about probably 30, 40 minutes now. And... Uh, you know, it, it's got to be stressful for them as well. Uh, these deputies, uh, with the uh, with what I would believe to be a sergeant or better, uh, you can see that sergeant clearly on his phone, 
probably communicating with uh, other other you know of his supervisors on how far what they can do what what what's the plan and as far as you know you branched that christina about folks at home saying well why don't you just go over there and take them out of the car what are you doing just open the door and yank that guy out my answer to that always is would you do it you know and that usually shuts people down because we just don't know you know, he still yeah. has that car still runs. He could put it in drive. Uh, you could drag him and maybe a deputy over the side. He might have mm. a knife in there. He might have a gun. So it's better to keep everybody safe and just wait it out. And that's what's happening right now. Well, okay. You've got to feel for those residents who live in that neighborhood. Uh, for them, their day completely disrupted. I don't know about you, Stu, but I feel like I'm always on the go and always in a <laughs> rush. One, one thing that throws off my game really disrupts my day so i can't imagine being a parent uh waiting for your kids to come home from school or having to go to work in the afternoon or trying to go to the grocery store or the post office or something like that and you can't because this is happening in your neighborhood a and as we look at this this driver here this dui driver dui suspect here uh you know i, I can't help but hurt as well for this driver because i'm thinking this is somebody's perhaps brother father uncle son and if they are from here are their relatives watching this wondering what's happening to their loved one why they're doing this what's going wrong here and there you go that's that nitrous tank we believe some kind of tank that this person seems to be sucking on uh which we, we got to know affects the brain some way um but again this is somebody's loved one and you hate to see their day go like this as well you have to wonder what's going on in their life that their day ended up like this at 223 on a Thursday in Los Angeles. Uh, law enforcement there, the, the patients law enforcement has to have there with their guns drawn, sitting there at the ready, making sure they are safe. Obviously, we know we had a bad incident last night involving the LAPD, where three LAPD officers yep. were shot when they were trying to deal with somebody who was barricaded. Um, so safety first. I mean, Stu, think about that right there. After what happened last night, in Lincoln Heights with three officers shot you have to keep in mind that it is safety first and you don't know how yeah. the person's going to react they were canine officers so obviously police had already engaged that suspect tried different maneuvers to bring that suspect into custody and that's what happened with the canine officers from Metro and LAPD safety first here well, definitely, and we've been talking about that for, for most of the afternoon. Is it, it is all about safety. Uh, those deputies, they you know they work within these parameters, and that one of the biggest parameters is safety. Safety for the suspects, well-being, safety for officers, safety for the, the general public that may be around here. And uh, you know, Roxy pointed it out earlier on too. At least this vehicle is stopped. At least the general public, their safety is is been satisfied. Satisfied. There is no, there's no way that uh, that that he's going to be able to injure the random uh, the random person, a civilian going to work or walking a dog right now, because that vehicle is kind of hemmed in at the end of Poplar out here in the Compton area. So that part has been taken care of. But now the deputies, like you said, their safety is is, is in question, and it will be in question until that suspect is in the, is in cuffs, in custody, and of course the safety of that suspect. We worry that I'm sure sure that they worry about it as well when he's been revving that engine you haven't seen it yet but he's been revving that engine and then putting that car in reverse and spinning those tires if he bumps that car into drive and launches it into that wash that could be fatal that could be a fatal move for that suspect it, it you know at least a, a severe injury so they don't want any of this they don't want to have any of those problems they just want to get that suspect into custody and then get him to into the system and hopefully you can get some help you were talking about uh, family members maybe one of the family members well we haven't seen a phone so uh, but maybe one of the family members can reach out to, uh, to the deputies and say you know bring up this or tell them this and maybe that'll help uh, bring this to an end but right now it seems to be a lot of uh, deputies waiting that suspect's just been in there biding his time uh, using the using his narcotics 
at, uh, at you know, at, at a nonstop rate, which I also have to wonder about, like you said, what, what's that going to do to him? And then when they do take him into custody, I'm sure these deputies are thinking about that as well. They don't want to see him get into cuffs and have him get into a panic attack. So I am sure they're going to be calling the uh, L.A. County Fire Department, or in this case, Compton Fire, and uh, they'll bring AMR out here. That's the ambulance service, and they're going to help, help uh, you know, be on the ready when they do take this suspect into custody. But you can see him starting to, you know, earlier on, very agitated, very animated, uh, moving around a lot. Now you can start to see that kind of slower movement, maybe a little bit more like, oh, geez, maybe he's starting to realize, even with his inebriation, that this is a situation where he's not going to be able to get out of. And, they, and maybe, he's, maybe he's starting to reason this out, and he'll just open that door and go into custody. Reason. That's a good word to use in this. Uh, I don't know there's been a whole lot of reason here in this whole situation. Uh, in, in just a bit, I don't want to call for it just yet, but in just a bit we're going to show you video of earlier what's been going on. But again, we don't know this guy's mental health state, his state of mind, what he could be on substance-wise that affects your ability to reason. Um, i got to think eventually you got to go to the bathroom, you're hungry, you think about your family, it's going to get colder and darker at night. Obviously, a beautiful sunny day here in SoCal. But eventually, in the evening, it's going to get colder. Uh, we, we do know part of the back window has been shot out with those pepper balls. And as you were saying, that's a crank window that he's not put the window up. Perhaps it, it's, it's hot in there as well because the sun can beat down on you on a day like today. and gets kind of warm in the vehicle. But again, he's not driving forward. He's not driving backward. That's not going to happen. I suppose he could take a run for it. Uh, but let's just get some perspective of what it's like to be a deputy there on the scene. Joining us now is former assistant sheriff with the L.A. County Sheriff's Department, James Hemmel. Uh Jim, thanks for, for stepping up on a probably a nice day for you. And we appreciate you helping us fill the time here with this coverage and trying to bring uh, viewers a little insight. Uh, what, what's it like to be a deputy there on the ground? Yes, of course, um, because it is very important. When you're talking about police pursuits, uh, obviously we have the general public that we're concerned about. So always uh, for all of law enforcement, the priority is public safety, meaning we have to make sure that the driver and suspect does not pose an, uh, a danger to the public, whether it be pedestrians or other drivers. And uh, so we now uh, successfully have him it appears, um, cordoned off and secured from harming other people. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I think the priority would be to certainly mm -hmm. look for a peaceful resolution to prevent harm to this individual who's obviously troubled. Well, well Jim, yeah, that's a good word for it. Uh, a difficult day, obviously, for this person and their family members. As we watch the deputies there with their guns drawn for such a long period of time, uh, what goes through your mind as you are there trying to make sure your fellow officers are safe? You are the ones there with the eyes on this suspect. You are the ones with the, the guns drawn. Now, I, I guess you can see our video right now. Looks like somebody in an SEB uniform, your equivalent of SWAT. Um, perhaps you can give some perspective on this officer we were seeing. Yeah, so initially, um, as you mentioned, the patrolmen and women on the scene um, are first ensuring that if unfortunately the individual comes out with an immediate uh, deadly threat that they can resolve that so there's no harm to the public or deputies on the scene. Uh, meanwhile, there's a lot of going on behind the scenes, as Stu had mentioned, um, where you want to ensure that uh, you have evacuations, you have local school children are diverted away from the area so that they don't present uh, another problem for uh, the deputies on the scene, uh, meaning another problem where uh, they would be in harm's way. Um, all the while, you're also bringing tactical uh, equipment, and that would be our Special Enforcement Bureau, uh, centered on essentially keeping the person at bay and then trying to de-escalate utilizing different forms of equipment, whether it's uh, stun bags, a canine, um, OC spray, but of course, just de-escalation tactics, trying to talk the individual down mm -hmm. from doing anything uh, desperate. Uh, he does seem to be in a desperate position uh, in the sense of 
uh, fleeing from law enforcement when it's evident that uh, he's not going to get away. You know, Jim, I, I see that one deputy vehicle backing up. I don't know if that person is changing shifts or moving out of the way for something like the Bearcat type vehicle, which can be quite intimidating. Often that is used to block someone in or to make sure they're not going anywhere. We've seen them get blocked in from both sides. Uh, you talk about the de-escalation tactics. When somebody is on perhaps a substance, we see him inhaling something, looks like a blue nitrous tank or perhaps something else. I don't know the substance as well enough to know. Um, that's got to affect your ability to reason with them if they're, if they're on something. Uh, great point. Um, so the armored rescue vehicle, also known as ARVs, will provide that level of protection for uh, deputies to get closer to perhaps convince him to de-escalate the situation while also keeping that vehicle from leaving again because uh, those vehicles can be used as weapons themselves. And so uh, those kinds of considerations are being made right now, I'm sure. Also, with regards to the chemical uh, substance that's there, it does appear to be some form of nitrous or some form of an intoxicant. Obviously, we don't know from here what it is, but that euphoria that um, puts people in a state of mind where oftentimes they're trying to ignore what's in front of them, and that can present a danger because mm -hmm. uh, it puts them in desperate situations with uh, less fear often and fear of harming themselves, fear of harming others. So that's where our deputies really need to, and it appears they are, take every precaution to obviously protect themselves and protect the public, and it appears they've done a great job of doing that. And it looks to me like I'm looking at those SCB, again, your version of SWAT there, uh, with those green uniforms there. Uh, you, you know, given what happened with LAPD last night, where you had three officers shot, luckily they're all going to be okay and that they were not life-threatening injuries. Uh, again, they were canine officers, meaning other officers had worked already on that matter to try to defuse that situation. And you have that happen. So obviously that's fresh in the mind of everybody in law enforcement. I know you have your roll call meetings. You discuss what's been happening. And, and, and safety first when you think of something like that in a whole different way. It's like we really, got to, we really don't know what people are going to do or be, be like. That's a good point because oftentimes um, our first priority or law enforcement's first priority is the public safety and obviously protecting um, the deputies and police officers on scene. As you saw with the LAPD situation, oftentimes uh, the vulnerability comes by actually pr creating that safety layer for other individuals, including the suspect. I mean, certainly we could take a further approach or be more distant, which would move uh, law enforcement from harm's way, but then it puts the public in more jeopardy because the person could flee with a mm -hmm. weapon, flee with the vehicle again. So oftentimes those types of uh, shootings where we saw three LAPD officers and our thoughts and prayers are with each of them, uh, oftentimes that's because they're putting themselves in harm's way, ironically, to de-escalate a situation with a desperate suspect, as we saw last night and, and also in this case as well. Yeah, our thoughts with them indeed. Quick healing, we hope. Uh, let's just talk about your credentials for a minute because you have seen every scenario on the planet, I believe. Uh, retired Chief of Sheriff's Special Operations. You currently work as a senior advisor for the United States Department of Justice. You've trained people overseas as well. How have you seen the tactics change over the eras and, what, and, and the way you're seeing things being handled right now today? Well, there's a, such an emphasis on uh, de-escalation and a safe resolve, which all, often includes uh, the suspect themselves. And Los Angeles has really been on the front line of that, I think, mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of pressure from uh, excellent leaders uh, in our community to try to take uh, and really have the best of our tactics be utilized by our frontline officers at all times to have consistent um, excellence uh, when we serve the community is the goal. And so sometimes we see uh, situations where that's not used, and I think we're striving to constantly do that. But that being said, um, what I've learned with my new role uh, with the United States Department of Justice, uh, training foreign law enforcement agencies, is how far ahead, in fact, Los Angeles, whether it's LAPD, Los Angeles County Sheriffs, and, of course, all of the agencies within L.A. County, we do have uh, tactics that, 
um, rely on or that focus on de-escalation, uh, public safety, and trying to reduce the harm that's done certainly to the public, the responding officers, and even the suspects. But oftentimes, desperate suspects put um, law enforcement in a situation where there are no other options. So what you see right now in this incident is you see uh, the sheriff's department working to bring in resources mm -hmm. while they can to try to de-escalate and calm this situation without injury. And uh, oftentimes the suspect prevents that from occurring if they were to act um, in a manner that forces a, a more uh, deadly confrontation. When you say bring in resources when they can, uh, I'm thinking it's 2.30 now, you know, eventually it's going to get dark out, which makes it all that much more difficult for police and law enforcement to see what's happening there. Um, mental health might play into this as well. Obviously, this person is having a very difficult day. Uh, we're talking about possible substances. Um, do you have negotiators there on the scene trying to talk with this person? We haven't seen the person use a cell phone, not like they're in communication with, say, family or loved ones. They've just been sitting there uh, smoking and, and, and taking whiffs, it looks like, off a tank. Yes, and uh, crisis negotiators are certainly being summoned to the scene. I'm certain of that. And in the meantime, I'm sure deputies on the scene are attempting to calm the person down and de-escalate. We do have to take precautions and make sure that if he does something unexpected or desperate, uh, certainly reaching down like he's doing now, we don't know what he's reaching for. That's what's going through the deputy's mind right now. And them keeping their calm and their poise and trying to talk to him and, and, and find out exactly what actions he's taking mm -hmm. uh, is a priority. And then uh, bringing in a crisis negotiator, a skilled person who uh, has a background in psychology and human behavior and try to appeal to the person's better senses, which is, as you mentioned, is quite difficult to do when they're uh, under the influence of uh, substances and uh, or have mental uh, health concerns. So that's why a skilled person uh, who has a background um, in those kind of human behaviors is mm -hmm. somebody who would be better suited for that. But in the meantime, as we're waiting, deputies are uh, given that basic level to try to calm the situation and take precautions from a tactical standpoint um, to keep that situation from escalating. So, Jim, if you're willing to stand by, we'd appreciate it. If you've got to go, I understand. I want to bring in Stu Mandel, who's been up in Sky Fox for us, uh, to kind of perhaps walk me through some of the video from earlier in this pursuit. It started around 1255. Let's go ahead and roll a clip. And Stu, if you can see it, great. If not, I can paint the picture. And um, Well, you're going to have to paint the picture. Okay. Yeah, definitely, because we can't see it up here in Skyvox. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so what I'm going to do when I call for that video is I'll, have, I'll paint the picture and you can weigh in on it. But basically, you took this over around 1255, give or take. Overall, how would you describe how this pursuit has gone up to this point? Well, you know, I have to say that the deputies were uh, using a, a lot of restraint. Uh, they were, uh, at first it was, like you said, a cat and mouse type of situation where they would stop and they would go, and they would stop and they would go. But uh, then later on, it, it turned into a situation where they, they turned it back into a pursuit. And they were doing the pit maneuver, and I, we saw two solid pit maneuvers where that pickup truck just spun around. Uh, it didn't bring it to an end. It just spun that truck around. Whoever that uh, that deputy was behind the wheel of that uh, cruiser that actually is right behind it was doing an amazing job and it would do it uh, did it twice but wasn't it wasn't enough to dread, get that driver to stop uh, he did actually collide with at least one deputy's vehicle when they did spin it around and when that happened that was uh, when I thought that this might go the other way but again deputies showing a lot of restraint out there and just continued to pursue that vehicle uh, we did see it drive on some of the uh, center dividers. I was hoping that it would get stuck in that one point, but it didn't. And we saw it, uh, but then we also saw it stopping at the red lights. And that was another moment where deputies were actually stopping traffic, keeping the public safe, and uh, you know, keeping them away from that suspect. 
in the end, when it came to an end out here on Poplar, uh, they were aggressive. That would be the best word to use, but also very safe. They weren't doing anything that was endangering that suspect or any of those deputies. They were trying to get that CS or those pepper balls into that truck. They were breaking the windows. They, we watched them do that. We watched them drive that uh, uh, that one cruiser. They backed it, uh, drove it up to the back of that truck. That uh, that driver uh, tried to get out. Uh, was was ramming that vehicle at one point. Uh, so you know, safety was definitely the the primary uh, objective for all those deputies that were involved the entire time that this pursuit was going on. That suspect. Defiant. That's the best word to use. Uh, Pig-headed might be, uh, you know, maybe we don't we don't want us to do name calling, but definitely very defiant. And he continues to be defiant down there, knowing that he has that upper edge. The deputies have to work within a parameter of uh, of safety, and you know, if, of that suspect and everybody around him. That suspect, he gets to do whatever he wants right now. But again, you pointed it out. This is not uh, this is not something to make light of. That uh, suspect clearly has issues uh, you know and, and one of those issues is going to uh, is, is clearly uh, substance abuse and he continues to uh, abuse himself down there while the deputies the only thing they can do right now is watch I wonder if he if he consumes enough of that if he would just pass out and that would give those deputies the opportunity to make their way over there but that neighborhood we saw a couple of those homes evacuated we do see those SEB officers here on scene I have yet to see the armored vehicle it may be around the block but how are they going to get that in there these deputies have a lot of problem solving to do to get that suspect out of there safely and right now it is really just a huge waiting game huh uh, I'm wondering Stu could you perhaps give us that wider shot again to show the neighborhood how much of the neighborhood is affected here the whole street there we're at Poplar Street in Wilmington and then you see that greater neighborhood with the sheriff's department blocking off that road there. Imagine if you are the residents and trying to come home, your kids are trying to come home after school, you're trying to go somewhere, run some errands, and now you're blocked off yeah. because you have this very, very long standoff. Uh, Stu, you're, you, you, you covered a lot there. For anybody who didn't see what happened here with the two attempts at a pit maneuver, the pepper ball sprayed, the blocked in vehicle there, where if he drives forward, he goes into a wash. Um, like you said, a lot of action has been taken to try to stop this, and some viewers might think, not enough. Why couldn't they stop him doing the, during the pit maneuver? Well, you know, the, if anybody was watching, they saw it happening live. Uh, at one point, that one of the pit maneuvers where he was at that intersection, they did the pit maneuver, and then other deputies were using their vehicles to block him in or try to block him in. He wove through there. He collided at least with one of those uh, with one of those vehicles. So, you know, it it wasn't the, it wasn't on lack of effort. It was the idea of safety. It was idea, and, and that and when I say that, the safety was actually that suspect. They didn't want to injure that suspect. Mm. And uh, that suspect clearly has no concern for himself and or anybody around him, uh, even though he was stopping at the red lights, which was interesting to see in itself. But right now, he continues to abuse himself down there with that nitrous gas. Uh, we watched him earlier on. I mean, the vape, the vape pens, they might be THC. They might not be. But we did see him smoking something earlier on. I would venture to say that was marijuana. But, uh, you know, I'm literally my hope is is that he's just going to exhaust himself he's going to pass out and then these deputies can just kind of make their way over there and take him into custody but uh, how if that doesn't happen how are they going to do it that's really difficult and uh, again that's one of those situations where you know I'm, I'm glad I'm the guy in the helicopter watching and talking about it and not having to make those decisions down there how they're going to get him out uh, I've talked to people in the past where they've said well why don't the deputies just walk up over there and open the door and yank that guy out well would you do it that's my simple question you know you just don't know you don't know what that guy's got in the car or the truck and you also don't know how desperate he is well, he might grab you yeah. and drive into the wash, you know? We, we, we have seen them do maneuvers like that where they just go in and drag somebody out. You're right. Uh, that's a good point that yeah. he could floor it over the edge there and, and deputies could get hurt, taken with him. Um, might he just pass out? I, I don't know if how what he's taking or breathing. Yeah. I don't know how that works. Do you just pass Me out neither. with what he's taking? Maybe you just are calmly sitting there. Maybe you can sit there for hours calmly. I don't know. Um, 
I want to bring back in our guest, retired chief of Sheriff's Special Operations from the Sheriff's Department. You know this job very well, uh, James Hemmeld. As you saw those moves, and if we want to re-rack that tape again and show that uh, attempted pit maneuver once or twice, we can have you weigh in on that because some viewers might think, well, how come they couldn't stop this guy? Yes, for, for many years, uh, actually, the Sheriff's Department um, had um, removed the pit maneuver as a tactic, and Stu knows he's been on uh, covering this for years, as you have. And uh, But more recently, uh, the previous sheriff authorized it. I actually submitted that as a policy. We were trying to um, actually get that reenacted for safety reasons, because oftentimes you would have a position of advantage where in other words you would have an opportunity away from people mm -hmm. away from schools and you can actually do a pit maneuver and what we saw here is perfect timing by the deputies they did it in a manner where if the person lost control of the vehicle it wouldn't likely uh, result in an injury to other people so those are the considerations that deputies must make when they enact that uh, pit maneuver and i'm glad to see that they took those precautions into account um, because if there was uh, pedestrians walking around or other vulnerable sure. drivers, then that would be a time. Is that going to give it. us more time? And yeah, I saw in one of the shots there, there were some pedestrians, some women on the sidewalk there. And also, I know we're concerned, Jim, also about the suspect trying to carjack somebody. We've seen the attempt at that a number of times. Uh, now, you know, Stu had made the point, might this guy just pass out? I, I don't know what calming substances he is taking that he is able to just sit there like that calmly. Uh, and I, I'm thinking with negotiators, Jim, do you perhaps try to talk to him about family, children, spouse, loved ones who care about this person coming home safely? Well, that's certainly a consideration uh, to have the crisis negotiators focus on whatever is driving his desperate behavior and trying to talk reason to this individual but unfortunately all too often what we see are individuals who are not making sense and uh, it can be from mental illness as you mentioned earlier or the uh, intoxication whatever that uh, substance is if in fact it is nitrous oxide or something to that effect that provides a euphoric uh, sort of feeling which would really make a lot of this uh, feel like a uh, bad dream to this individual rather than a uh, reality. Mm. So even speaking to that is going to be a consideration that uh, the crisis negotiators will have to introduce into their equation. Right. Yeah. So so the, a rational discussion with someone like that might have no effect whatsoever. Well, we could be here, I guess, a long time looking now at the neighborhood there, uh, Sky Fox giving us that wider shot. And now we're here on the uh, closer look here. Um, Jim, as we're watching this, Stu used the word restraint, deputies using restraint. Is that what you feel you're seeing here? And how long do we wait this out? It's going to be coming up soon on, you know, dinner hour for people. It's been all, all that would be all afternoon if we hit five o'clock. What I'm watching here is commendable restraint by our sheriff's deputies. And uh, it should be a reminder to many people that uh, we can always strive to do better, and I, I believe the Sheriff's Department is in that category, uh, even when mistakes are made. But uh, it should serve as a reminder that reverence for human life is at the top of the priority, and it, it's evidenced by what we're watching here. Because certainly, um, if we were not acting as a professional organization, or if the Sheriff's Department was not, there are other measures that could be taken to end the situation. And sometimes, unfortunately, the suspect drives that through more desperate actions. But what we're seeing here are precautions being taken, resources being brought in, uh, proper timing being uh, taken into account as far as the pit maneuver and other actions. Uh, what you're seeing there is Air 5, um, and that's, that will transport some of our Special Enforcement Bureau to include paramedics, likely even a crisis negotiator to be on scene in a more rapid manner um and uh that that's likely uh, what's driving the air five to be in in a position to assist as well okay we did see that helicopter there we could also note that you brought up law enforcement always working to do better we do know there are people and communities who have um some painful thoughts about their encounters with law enforcement and the tactics of law enforcement and that is something that uh 
you know, plays out in certain scenarios that are very difficult to watch on TV, very difficult to watch in person, very difficult to have been your loved ones encounter. Uh, you see there some more activity there happening there on the scene. You, I have to wonder if they're going to try to make some kind of move at some point. You mentioned the air support, the helicopter. What role is the air support in this? Well, air support provides more intelligence, essentially, to the deputies on the ground. Um, are there other people in harm's way? Are there other avenues of escape? Uh, if you're talking about uh, Air 5, which there was a quick picture of, then that's more bringing resources in, whether it's a SWAT team or being prepared with paramedics should something un, um, untold happen. Uh, and so having every precaution at the ready is exactly what's occurring. And, it, and it's, it's worth using these valuable resources for the public. Uh, I have many family and friends in Compton, what I call adopted family there, that the many people having served uh, from the opening of Compton Sheriff Station in 2000 and uh, working at the uh, Compton Salvation Army and things of that nature. And so uh, the Sheriff's Department is very close with the community there uh, in the Compton and surrounding area. And so I, I really feel the respect is uh, being given right now, and you're seeing that with every resource being brought in to ensure that there's no harm to the Compton or residents of that general area that they're in um, to ensure that there's a peaceful resolve. Um, so right now it appears to be isolated to this individual. They've taken precautions to make sure that uh, he could not escape and again present a dangerous situation through the pursuits, uh, pursuit operations. And uh, now it's a matter of trying to resolve in a safe manner for this individual, even though he's shown disregard for safety of others. Well, I can't help but think of all the expense going into this standoff when it comes to our tax dollars, all the law enforcement that was part of this pursuit, all the law enforcement that is there at this standoff. We saw the helicopter there, comes to air support, uh, SEB slash version of SWAT, um, and then the management that is, you know, also thinking about this from your management positions that are perhaps not there on the scene. It's a cost that uh, we live with as human beings, as citizens of Southern California, that uh, when we have encounters like this, law enforcement, we trust to do their job, even though it's going to be a costly, perhaps, afternoon for us as taxpayers. You bring up a great point because utilizing them in this manner, it, I don't think anyone would have any concern with because we care about the community that we're in right now. Um, and it emboldens even more the the level of trust that we have to uphold with the community by not violating certain trust during all police incidents and this is an example of an incident where i think uh the sheriff's department is certainly honoring that trust that the community provides and and public trust is so important in in ensuring that the community continues to uh follow and work with law enforcement when needed and certainly in this situation it's needed well we appreciate your your compassion and your concern and your care and i know there are a lot of people who are you know working in law enforcement with the thought of being progressive in policing there are people in the community and activists who have their own version of what they want from law enforcement or and some don't want law enforcement at all uh, we know that's a current issue as we look at how history has played out with law enforcement but right now today on this day on this thursday coming up at three o'clock we have a standoff in the compton area the street is poplar and street in wilmington did you want to jump in jim okay let me continue on here all right so poplar street and wilmington we're in a neighborhood here uh we can see this is a very old truck the back window has been uh, shot out with those pepper balls has had no effect on the driver. He was able to open his window. From that shot there, you can see if he goes forward, he goes into a wash. He goes backward, he goes into a sheriff's department car. Uh, he could make a run for it, but there's a neighborhood there. There are residents right there, and you have law enforcement with their guns drawn, and they've had them drawn for, we started the pursuit around 12.55, and uh, they've been uh, there at the ready should anything go awry, we've had people evacuated, escorted out of their properties, people who live in the neighborhood. Law enforcement has had to bring them out. 
Uh, Stu Mandel, let's bring you back into the conversation here as we continue to watch this. Are you seeing any greater activity there, or is it the same thing? We're just sitting here waiting. Well, I, you know, I've been watching some of the uh, off-airs on uh, some of the other stations, uh, on our, sta uh, our station. Uh, we're actually headed back to base, just letting uh, the viewers know. So the other ca other helicopter is up right now, so we're getting a picture from them. But I did see uh, those SAB guys showing up. We saw the Air Rescue 5 making their way over there. They're probably going to be bringing in supplies and also some of those uh, uh, deputies that we saw down there. They probably were landing over there at the Compton Airport, which is literally a stone throw away from where this ended and they're making their way over there they're the guys that are going to bring this to an end they're going to figure out how to get they they probably had practice scenarios where they've dealt with something like this but in the end the best thing that would happen for everybody involved would be just to have that suspect give themselves up uh, I did uh, listen to you guys talking earlier on, and it was, you know, excellent. It was an excellent thing to talk about and see about the de-escalation, where they were moving, the, they would move farther back, but still be in the area, knowing so that suspect knew that officers or deputies are still there. But they de-escalated, brought, you know, didn't have as many people around there, possibly letting that suspect have a different mind frame, and hopefully maybe thinking, well, okay, this isn't as bad. I'll just get out of the car. But in the end, it is going to be that suspect going into custody hopefully he will not be injured it is putting a lot of people uh, out today the school that's nearby i believe is davis elementary i was looking that up just moments before we left uh, but there is a school nearby and wilmington does is one of the major streets right there so you've got to wonder you know school is let out or is going to be letting out a lot of these folks uh, if they're if their family members going to pick up children they might have to detour around so it is going to inconvenience a lot of folks but in the end and it's safety. You don't want to see that suspect injured. You don't want to see the general public injured. And those deputies doing an amazing job this afternoon uh, keeping people safe. And Aroxia was the one that pointed it out, is even though it came to an end with a, on a dead-end street, this is, you know, it is just, it, it might, you know, it was bad luck for, it was good luck for everybody because yeah. that vehicle stopped moving. And it, in, for the most part, the public, the folks that are, would be in the neighborhood if this thing was ripping down their street, they are all safe right now. All right. We are looking right now what I believe they actually call this a Bearcat, this heavily armored vehicle. Uh, oh, awesome. Jim, he Jim Hemmel, why don't you weigh in on this? Talk about this vehicle we're seeing here. <clears throat> well, you know, we've... Uh, I'm sorry, I thought you were saying, <laughs> uh, we've seen these in the past, and they are amazing trucks, and, uh, and they, they also carry the, uh, they also carry paramedics in there as well, that's something that we should point out to the public, you know, a lot of these SWAT guys, they are trained in their specialized tactics, but one of the specialized tactics is also saving lives, they're not just there to save the life of other deputies or innocent people, but if that suspect becomes injured, they're going to be the first responder, they're going to be the one that's there administering first aid to that suspect so that's part of that what goes on inside those vehicles they're actually equipped with first aid and uh, and what same things that you might find in an ambulance heavily armored that's another big plus in this case we don't know about any weapons but if that suspect does have a weapon it is heavily armored also very maneuverable and very powerful so I don't know how they're going to use it in this case I'd love to watch it but right now that's a good thing that it's there it's going to show it, it, it just it being there also shows that command presence and that possibly will give that uh, suspect the frame of mind that I'm not going anywhere this is over maybe I should just give up it can be very intimidating to see that vehicle behind you uh, if we can bring in the former assistant sheriff James Hemmold because you work for the sheriff's department uh, I'm wondering what you can tell us about what you think you're seeing here now with that vehicle what it means for that vehicle to be brought in so the uh, armored rescue vehicle, ARV as it's known, and, and that's the smaller version, that's the Bearcat, is used to put deputies in a position where they're closer to the uh, targeted uh, individual. Unfortunately, he's uh, put us in a situation where we don't know his next step. And so uh, to prevent him from uh, presenting harm to the neighborhoods, they'll put uh, themselves in a tactical position, probably removing one of those uh, radio cars and replacing it with the Bearcat in order to put the tactical operators closer to the situation. And uh, this way, if 
every precaution is taken in the event that um, the suspect makes a move that's more desperate. Uh, but it also allows for these less lethal options, such as a large stun bag, um, chemical spray, as well as perhaps the canine. So without giving too much information, we don't know uh, if a suspect has access to hear these types of options. We know that there's various resources that are available and each situation is different. So based on the environment that they're in, those there's somewhere a command post where a, uh, a command officer that in my latter years, uh, as I move it up in the organization, that's the post I would take. A, and the special weapons operators bring options to the forefront. They're tactical experts. They will present various options and what they see is the, the best tactical option to have a peaceful resolution. And then the decisions made uh, to to deploy that type of tactic based on what's in the best interest. It also provides the opportunity to give additional information. So while all of this is going on, additionally, the patrol officers are deputies are evacuating surrounding residents if he leaves the vehicle and attempts to run. Uh, so we want to make sure that the surrounding neighborhood is safe as well. So all of that information funnels in to the command post so that solid, safe decisions can be made that are in the best interest of not only the public, but the deputies on scene and then eventually the suspect who's actually presenting the problem. Well, let's talk about what we're dealing with here. It is now 3 o'clock in Los Angeles. I'm Christine Devine here at Fox 11. We are watching this bear cat move closer to the suspect who led authorities on a chase in the Compton area today. Ended up being cornered here near a flood control channel. And there we have this standoff. The location is Poplar Street in Wilmington. That pickup coming to a stop around 1 o'clock. There's a wash right in front of him, so he's pinned in from behind. Uh, deputies, if you wonder what they're doing, well, they did fire multiple pepper balls into the cab of the pickup truck. Broke part of the rear window. Driver didn't move, still sitting there with his window down. Apparently got through that. Um, he tried to back into law enforcement vehicles, spinning his tires. He did two pit maneuvers, were, were, ex tried to execute two pit maneuvers, and that didn't stop the driver. Deputies tossed a gas container into the cab. That didn't stop it. So we have had this standoff now for several hours. And uh, we can take a look now at that video. And with me is, is Stu Mandel, who's been in Sky Fox. That's the one pit maneuver. And our retired chief of sheriff's special operations with the sheriff's department giving us an idea of what his former colleagues are, are having to deal with there on the job. And the, the word that's keep coming to mind has been restraint as we have this suspect just uh, taking over the neighborhood because there's a standoff now. People can't come and go in their neighborhood. There are pedestrians there on the side. Oh, spy, they tried to spike strip. That didn't work. Yep. So, so uh, Jim, many attempts to stop this driver were put into play, and now it's a waiting That's game fine. to see if he will get out of the vehicle and what law enforcement can do to get him out of the vehicle. A great point. Uh, there was many efforts made to uh, essentially stop him in his tracks before uh, he made decisions, as we often see in these pursuits, and certainly Stu can speak to that over the years, uh, uh, the desperation that we see in individuals who are involved in these pursuits. And uh, the pit maneuver was utilized. I was very impressed with the fact that they took precautions and uh, timed the execution of that pit maneuver uh, when there was no danger to the public. Um, oftentimes, your emotions when you're uh, traveling at a high speed or you have a suspect who uh, is presenting a dangerous uh, situation to the public, the emotions can get carried away. And uh, I have not seen evidence of this. In fact, I've seen commendable restraint and calm professional poise in that they're waiting and timing um, the execution of some of these tactics when it's appropriate. And so from every standpoint, it appears that they're taking those precautions, and it's, it's good to see our, our local law enforcement doing that. And uh, having served in Compton for, for many years as well, I know some town hall and community meetings and coffee meets, and not always positive, uh, sometimes people voicing their concerns, but I know that overwhelmingly the theme is um, 
our family and community in Compton uh, appreciate the sheriff's department. They just want to see the consistent professionalism, and I think you're seeing evidence of that uh, right here. And so um, working to constantly do better and working to uh, demonstrate that professionalism that's centered on reverence for human life and uh, ensuring that the, the safety, uh, the public is safe, and then certainly the deputies on scene and then uh, also the suspect at hand. So dealing with his emotional status, um, the crisis negotiators will, I'm sure, be brought in soon, as well as these less lethal options that will be available once the Bearcat is uh, closer to this vehicle. Well, we've seen so many incidents where the driver has been really putting people in danger. Right now, we're not seeing that. There are no pedestrians of concern. Uh, there are no other vehicles. Law enforcement seems to be in a safe manner. He's not been threatening the most bizarre thing is that he's been inhaling from a balloon and some kind of blue tank, which we might think is nitrous. Uh, don't know, but we keep seeing him hold that tank. He's not been using a phone at all. There you go, right there, playing with that tank again. Smoking as well, it seems. Um, sometimes we have family members try to come to a scene or residents come out. We haven't seen that, Jim, except for people trying to leave their home to get out of the neighborhood, and they've been escorted out. So law enforcement also has done a good job of blocking off the street and can really containing the area. Yeah, very good point, because oftentimes uh, you can have pedestrians who might mean well, let's say they know the individual, and they'll try to start speaking to them. And certainly if it's a family member, uh, the emotions are running high, Oftentimes, family can be helpful uh, in bringing them, but we want to assist them so that they can channel their emotions in a positive way. What we have seen when family take independent action and don't coordinate with law enforcement is they can actually escalate the situation because uh, they get frustrated at the, um, the lack of responsiveness by the person who's troubled, whether it's mentally or under the influence of, of an intoxicant. And... Um, and what often happens is they can drive that uh, behavior higher. So when we uh, interact with family to try to resolve the situation, it's best to do it in a coordinated manner with professionals, uh, crisis negotiators. And um, so you bring up a good point about uh, onlookers, pedestrians, and, and quite frankly, most of the time people are concerned and um, want to assist. And so a lot of what's going on is the deputies on the ground um, explain, hopefully taking the time to explain what's going on. You know, it's very frustrating. You have a lot of hardworking people in Compton coming home, just want to uh, come home, attend to their family, get their children home, get to dinner, things of that nature. It can be frustrating. That's, that's real life. Um, now being held uh, from your own neighborhood, from your own home. Well, so that's frustrating, too. And so... Yeah. It's important for law enforcement to take the time in respect to explain that situation. And uh, oftentimes people can be frustrated at, at us for being the bearer of bad news that, hey, you can't get into your home right now. We need to escort you out. Well, who amongst us hasn't been frustrated by some kind of delay in our own neighborhood or in our path to wherever we're going, work, whatever, because of what, whatever the, the delay is, it alters your schedule and alters your day. But you can see law enforcement there across from that wash, across the street there, making sure residents there are uh, safe and staying away and reminding them that there is police activity going on. Even a block over, you see law enforcement. But I can't imagine being the homeowners who live right there, who now are not able to perhaps come home, uh, enjoy their afternoon with their family, kids coming home from school. Um, and if you live in that area, obviously, you'd want to keep your doors locked in case a suspect ever were to make a run for it. Obviously, there's been no sign of movement, though, of him even opening the door, acknowledging law enforcement. He's just been sitting there for a good two hours now. Um, Jim, stand by. I wanted to bring in uh, Rick Dickert, who has been in Sky Fox for many, many years, covering many, many events, scenes like this. Uh, Rick Dickert, as you are, are coming into our coverage here, what is your take on what you're seeing here? Essentially, you could see uh, that pickup truck uh, ran into that dead end. That's Compton Creek there. It's just to the west of Wilmington Avenue. We are on West Poplar Street. What we're concerned with just a block away is General Benjamin Davis Jr. Middle School. And Stu alluded to this. 
uh, that that school is likely letting out at this time. And we're trying to ascertain if that school is on lockdown, if parents can come and pick up their children. Because as we widen out in Sky Fox, you'll be able to see that middle school is just a stone's throw from where this standoff is occurring. You can see the Bearcat there making some movement. And we, when we talk about SEB, what the acronym for that is, it's the Special Enforcement Bureau, Bureau of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. And they handle high-risk tactical operations involving things like barricades, like this one, hostage situations, or high-risk warrant situations. They have plenty of manpower and women power there on the scene. They have this uh, gentleman surrounded and uh, they are just going to wait this out. This is a very erratic uh, individual that's under the influence. But yes, protecting the residents of this Compton neighborhood is paramount to these deputies. And they are trying to get everybody out of harm's way. We saw a similar situation last night in which uh, an individual was barricaded uh, after firing on three LAPD canine officers. You can see they've got the yellow tape up there. They're surrounding the area, that perimeter, that line. You see the street sign there saying Poplar Street. That was Poplar Street and Wilmington Avenue, which Wilmington is a major north-south thoroughfare, which borders General Benjamin Davis Jr. Middle School. Again, trying to get in information there, but that Bearcat there is making a move, getting closer to where uh, that sheriff's uh, patrol car is, that SUV. This individual clearly under the influence. We could see him using there in that pickup truck. He's the only one inside the cab clearly there. He is communicating at times with those deputies, Christine, but he just doesn't want to give up, and we haven't seen uh, the sheriff's department make a move towards that cab yet, but they have that manpower in play. They have that bear cat there, and now it's just a wait and see. And so as we think, Rick, of someone not wanting to give up, I want to bring Jim back into the conversation. So why doesn't the person want to give up? As we said, are they under the influence? But I also wonder, do they have some kind of criminal record or some reason why going into custody is a bigger problem for them? Perhaps they have been in the system before. Perhaps they don't want to go back to jail. Perhaps they're going to just wait out their day because they don't want to go to jail, period. But, Jim, you have to factor, if you're the deputies there on the ground, you factor all of that into account here as to why the suspect is not making a move, knowing they can't go anywhere. That's certainly a good point. Um, all too often, um, people take desperate actions when they know they're returning um, to prison for a substantial amount of time. Now, not knowing anything about this individual, uh, that certainly doesn't look at like this behavior, not knowing, uh, because oftentimes with individuals who don't want to be taken, they take more desperate actions, forcing law enforcement into, unfortunately, more uh, deadly confrontations or certainly more um, hostile confrontations. But that being said, finding as much information as we can uh, to de-escalate the situation, speak to the trouble maybe that uh, he's experiencing right now, whether it's within the family or, like you mentioned, criminal troubles that he believes he has pending. Um, or it could be a, a mental health situation or even uh, being intoxicated. Those are the types of um, things that are important for a crisis negotiator to certainly know so they can speak to this person's troubles and, and convince them to take a more desperate action is really not in their best interest nor the people around them. But all of this is made much harder, as we spoke about earlier, when the person's in a euphoric state. And certainly if they're using the nitrous oxide, that is something that puts you in a more um, euphoric or a dream or nightmare state uh, because you're, you're, it's not as if it's actually occurring. So sometimes the fears that uh, we would all associate with a hostile confrontation or fleeing from police are removed and that places law enforcement in a desperate situation uh, or a more uh, tenuous situation because our efforts are centered around a peaceful resolve. So we're trying to deal with the unknown factor um, all centered on ensuring that the public's safe, the deputies on scene are safe, and then of course uh, the suspect. And so all of those factors are taken into consideration. I, I like hearing your perspective that it doesn't seem to you like this is a person who perhaps has a record in the system trying to avoid going to jail again. We may or may not know that. 
Um, but you're right. I, I, I think of some of the more desperate actions we have seen with people that are very frightening, very dangerous. This person is just sitting there. I, I guess my heart breaks because I know this is somebody's loved one. This is perhaps somebody's father or brother or uncle or son. And perhaps they are watching TV right now. Perhaps they are talking with law enforcement, giving them information or not giving information. But it always saddens me when I see somebody at their worst, having their worst day, um, knowing that they are somebody's loved one. Jim? It's very true. And, and as Rick also brought up, you know, the surrounding area is, is, uh, is something that's taken into consideration. The residents evacuating them, ensuring that uh, they're aware of what's going on. Uh, he made mention of the school in the surrounding area. So certainly, uh, we, I'm certain that uh, Compton Sheriff's has taken precautions to uh, ensure that uh, if the person were to go to ground, that you have a deputy sheriff there to um, to apprehend any threat that's that is presented. So taking every precaution is certainly a, a huge part of that. Um, uh, regarding the suspect in his background, and of course we may not know, it certainly doesn't fit that type of profile, but the unknown factor, you never know. Uh, people respond in different ways, but as we saw with the murder of the Riverside uh, deputy sheriff who just contacted somebody on a normal traffic stop and uh, the person was presuming and assuming that the deputy knew that he was going to go to prison, so he opened fire uh, on this innocent mm -hmm. deputy sheriff. And then, of course, last night with LAPD, you have uh, more aggressive behaviors of a more desperate uh, suspect. This person appears to be a troubled individual. Uh, we don't know what's driving that, and certainly finding uh, finding that out will be a goal of uh, crisis negotiators and the deputies on the scene um, for the sake of uh, trying to have a peaceful resolve to this situation. But the deputies have really uh, demonstrated professionalism in that they've uh, knew when to uh, push the action uh, and block the individual from leaving, even though he cornered himself. Uh, normally, distance is a good friend of law enforcement, but I think a good decision was made by the deputy to say, all right, at this point we have to pin him in rather than have him per continue the pursuit and turn around and endanger more public or deputies uh, in the field. So uh, I would say... Uh, good decision making appears to be at hand, and certainly professionalism and human uh, reverence for human life is uh, is at the top, and, and it's very impressive. So, as we see this really tremendous show of law enforcement here, we're seeing that second Bearcat. Um, I'm thinking of the expense and the manpower. In, in your opinion, is this second armored vehicle needed in a situation like this? Well, not knowing uh, exactly what um, they're dealing with or what the background is, I don't know if the person has a weapons history, uh, is believed to have a weapon in the vehicle. Hmm. Um, I'm not really um, privy to that information. So it would be difficult to second guess that. But I do know that uh, uh, using uh, several ARVs for one tactical operation is quite common. And oftentimes it's to uh, maybe prevent anyone from leaving or to bring in more resources uh, in a safe manner. And oftentimes those resources could be a canine, a, uh, a stun bag, uh, a taser uh, at closer range, things of that nature. Certainly a canine um, could be helpful um, if, it, if it goes on too long. You know, mm -hmm. making that decision of when to, uh, if this continues to stand uh, still and, and not pose uh, public, uh, public danger as far as based on the actions of preventing the person from leaving, then making the decision as to when to move uh, with the suspect is so dependent on how many variables that are there, uh, many of which is, is the suspect armed? Um, how long should we hold up uh, the community from uh, entering their home? I mean, they have a right to, to live peacefully in their home, and um, but reverence for human life will obviously guide a lot of those decision making and certainly in the short term um, they'll wait this person out as they should uh, to try to have a peaceful resolve and, and convince him to surrender peacefully well as we're watching this show of law enforcement here um you know jim i think i'm gonna go back in time with you and i maybe 25 years ago where i had a chance to partake in simulation village and some of the um, police training tactics and I remember one scene where I had to be the officer and go to a certain call and pat someone down 
it actually was a traffic stop, and I thought I did a great job. I thought I was in the clear, and the person had a weapon in their shoe. So we don't know the actions of people. I, I did another simulation with the sheriff's department in which a person had a weapon in under the couch cushion. So when you think visibly everything looks clear and the person seems to be perhaps not a threat, we know there can be different behaviors with people who are in distress. This person's been sitting in his vehicle since uh, the pursuit around 1 o'clock, sitting here, sucking on that tank there. So we're guessing perhaps not of right mind. But, Jim, I just think of those different scenarios that you were, you were present at them. We go way back many years, you and I, and, and, and just to have those different scenarios that you all are trained to encounter unpredictability. Yes, you bring up a good point. And first of all, uh, to the point of you uh, and, and the professionalism that showed to understand because you guys were, have been constantly reporting these types of important uh, activities that involve law enforcement in the community. So for you to get to know them firsthand uh, speaks to the professionalism of yourself and, and the organization you work for. But, but furthermore, uh, to, the, to the larger point of hiding sus uh, excuse me, weapons and things of that nature, um, that has to do with um, everything that goes into law enforcement, every contact that we make uh, we're, is centered on does the person possess a weapon that can hurt the public or myself? And that's with each uh, contact. So all too often um, where law enforcement uh, can be perceived as going wrong is not just providing a calm, simple explanation of uh, what activities we're doing, whether it's searching an individual or sometimes looking into a car with a flashlight when you approach a vehicle, uh, things of that nature, taking the time to explain calmly uh, what it is you're doing and why, and it's for the safety of the individual and also to make sure that you can have a, a safe interaction, whether it's a traffic stop or you're responding to a domestic violence call inside of somebody's house or something uh, just as simple as a, a disturbance uh, that we don't know the background. We just want to be aware that uh, nobody uh, is going to present uh, a danger to that situation. And over 33 years in law enforcement, unfortunately, I've seen uh, very close friends killed in the line of duty uh, for the community. And uh, oftentimes it's um, firearms that present that and they're firearms that are concealed on other individuals uh, or pursuit operations immediately after pursuit. Um, they open fire or approaching a house or approaching a vehicle. So we see a common theme that are danger zones for law enforcement. And so I think you bring up a good point about it's so important for law enforcement to be aware. Are, are we approaching somebody with a weapon or not? And it's not only for the safety of the deputy and the public, but also that individual. Um, and unfortunately, the unknown factor is what presents that danger to law enforcement because we do not have the opportunity to know for certain whether that individual has a weapon. And so all of the intel that we can garner prior to approaching is certainly in, in the benefit of law enforcement. And sadly, a very real issue in more recent years, too, has been suicide by cop, where the person is, is pushing law enforcement to engage. Um, and ends up in deadly consequences. Rick Dick, I'm going to bring you in in a second, but I want to roll video here uh, for our viewers to see what we've been dealing with. Right here, this is one action taken by that driver who's been boxed in in that standoff, that barricade situation there in his vehicle, where he just is hitting the gas there, and he's blocked in by that sheriff's vehicle. That shows you the erratic nature and behavior of this driver, reminding viewers he led people on a pursuit. He led law enforcement on this pursuit through the Compton area in which there were attempts to spike strip. There were two pit maneuvers and he had got away as well. Pepper balls have been sprayed in and this has been the action of the driver. So is this person dangerous? Hard to tell. Uh, obviously erratic, obviously willing to put uh, pedestrians and people on the street in danger if they're leading police and law enforcement on a pursuit. Uh, meteor Rick, I say meteorologist Rick Dickert, who's played double duty because you've been in Sky Fox so many times covering things like this. Um, this right here goes to show you the erratic nature of this driver. Yeah, that's right. And uh, the larger box there, that's earlier video. The smaller box is a live shot. And as we look live geographically, just if you're tuning in, this is in the community of Compton. And that is Poplar Street there, a dead end into 
Compton Creek. There's a bike path there as well and a pedestrian bridge. And the sheriff's deputies have that area covered there. And Assistant Chief uh, Hellman, uh, retired Assistant Chief Hellman, touched on this. But this is really important as we look at this scene here, that there is nothing ordinary about any incident which these deputies deal with. Nothing or ordinary or routine. I, in my years up in Sky Fox, covered so many tragic situations. And I recall uh, the SWAT officer from the Pol Pomona Police Department, Sean Diamond, who was serving a warrant, an early morning warrant, and he was shot and killed. There's been a handful of those situations that have occurred. Uh, and this individual clearly... Okay, you were just listening in there to our live coverage from our team at Fox 11 following this standoff with a suspected DUI driver. We've been watching this now for about two hours. We've seen the whole course of it as this has all played out in real time, live, raw, and unfiltered uh, from our multiple cameras that we have covering this incident, that white pickup truck that you're looking at there, you can see the suspect inside. He's really just been sitting there in the most uh, recent amount of time that we've been watching this all unfold as police have been pleading with him and trying to get him to come out of the vehicle. Really not much uh, activity has happened in the last hour or so, uh, but as our Sky Fox camera is now moving away, we'll continue to follow this and bring you any updates. They're trying to reach some sort of resolution with the driver here who has taken them really all around. They've deployed spike strips, that whole street where you've seen that car. Well, that is uh, uh, an area that has been blocked off for residents there as kids are getting out of school, families who need to get to their own street, that whole area is now blocked off until they can try to safely get this suspect out of the car. So uh, we've been following this here, this pursuit that has now resulted in what you just saw there moments ago, that white truck parked there, the suspect inside, really just not doing much despite one, many different attempts from police uh, trying to get him to cooperate. Okay, so you can see here uh, as we are back over the suspect's vehicle, again, it's that white pickup truck. This is in Compton. Many different uh, law enforcement vehicles here blocking off this area. Really no place for the suspect to go. They have reached a dead end on this street. You can see some homes on that street. As I had mentioned, kids are getting out of school now. Families are trying to return home. And this area for now is blocked off, uh, off of Poplar, I believe is the street name. So uh, for that reason, until they're able to get the suspect out of the vehicle to cooperate, uh, this is what we are dealing with right now. Not sure uh, if they're going to try some other tactics here, but we'll continue to monitor these live looks that we are getting from our Fox 11 Sky Fox cameras here. Again, this is a uh, suspected DUI driver, and that is what initially started this pursuit. He uh, had made many different, uh, very concerning turns throughout the whole process, weaving in and out of cop cars who were trying to stop him using different tactics to try to get this suspect to cooperate long before we reached this point here, this dead end on the street here. We're just going to stay over the shot here for a moment as we try to gather some additional details.
Okay, so uh, this overhead shot here is showing you live in real time where our Skyfox cameras are. We want to pull up some video from earlier as we were following this in case you missed the moments that led up to where we're at right now. So let's show you exactly this. You can see the, the vehicle being turned around there and uh, continuing to weave through cop cars, a reckless DUI suspect who has been seen throughout the course of our coverage huffing a balloon while leading officers on this pursuit throughout a Compton neighborhood, is still refusing to surrender, remains in that standoff with authorities. Now again, this is a previous video that led to the point that we are at showing you the moments uh, that led to the suspect driving and stopping and now just sitting in the parked car at that street that has a dead end. Uh, there have been a lot of interesting circumstances surrounding this, including uh, that he has been huffing a balloon. He also has appeared to be inhaling nitrous straight from a tank and vaping an unknown substance while in the driver's seat. Officials have tried multiple tactics here, many tactics really uh, deploying pepper balls in the vicinity of the truck, breaking a portion of the back window in an attempt to try to get the driver out, but none of this has been successful so far. Earlier, as you're seeing in the, the video here, the driver had crossed a center divider, hit multiple patrol cars, was somehow able to make it through at least three pit maneuvers. So uh, this driver really has been relentless throughout all of this. I think police are just trying to keep him in a place where he's not going to be in, in harm's way of the public, trying to work with him to get him to cooperate, to try to reach some sort of safe resolution here. So again, some video of the moments that led up to this. You can see uh, he, this is where he's about to reach the dead end. Uh, really hadn't been driving at crazy fast speeds in this pursuit, but uh, it's been a very lengthy one so far, which ultimately has resulted in him being at this dead end. And, and since he's been in the car parked there, hasn't really done much. It, it really just looks like he's sitting there. We've seen him come out and stick his head out of the window several times, uh, communicating with officers at some one point, lifting his hands up, uh, lifting his shirt up. So you can see him there, his head sticking out with that balloon in hand. Uh, so we've had a lot of different angles of him, but it appears now he's just kind of been sitting there as uh, police are trying whatever they can to reach some sort of uh, end to this standoff now that the suspect has been parked and has reached a dead end here. So another live look at uh, where he's at right now. Still there, that same spot, dead end with all of those emergency vehicles uh, surrounded around him, ready to try to act on if, if the suspect does get out of the car. Uh, so we will continue to follow this. We'll get you a, a look at what's going on in a, in a double box here as we continue to move on to some other top stories that we are following. Compton deputies responded to a call for service of a vehicle doing donuts in the street. And the driver was seen inhaling an unknown sus substance. As deputies arrived, they saw the driver was inhaling a known substance from a tank. Fearing that the, sus the suspect was going to uh, drive off and uh, create a public danger as well as the the danger for the public uh, also with the driver inhaling an unknown substance the deputies believed that the driver was under the influence the deputies attempted a traffic stop on the vehicle but the driver took off driving and a vehicle pursuit ensued the vehicle ended up to the 800 block of Poplar Avenue in the city of Compton, where the suspect refused to exit the vehicle. The crisis negotiation team and the mental evaluation team are on scene and attempted to communicate with the driver, but was not but was unsuccessful. The scene right now is turned over to the 
uh, Special Enforcement Bureau and uh, where the Special Enforcement Bureau deputies will attempt to bring the incident into a conclusion. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you over the... Uh, the deputies are attempting to make communication with him. But unsuccessful? Uh, they are un unsuccessful in getting him out of the vehicle. But they are in... What charges is he looking at so far? Uh, so far he's uh, looking at uh, driving under the influence and also assault with a deadly weapon on a peace officer. Uh, exit the vehicle peacefully, and so that we can bring this to a peaceful end. Apparently, some of the suspect's family members are here at the scene, and they're saying that they're not allowed to speak to them. Do you have any information about that? Uh, I have no information on that, sir. Uh, we have evacuated some residents from the area uh, for their safety. Are residents in any danger right now? Talk to you about that the danger of residents in the area. Uh, we urge the residents in the area to stay in their home and uh, listen to deputies' uh, orders. Can you confirm that the suspect in the pickup truck has in his possession a nitrous gas? Nitrous gas. Uh, the driver was uh, seen by the deputies inhaling a known substance from a tank. But you can't confirm it's a nitrous gas? We do not know the, the contents inside the tank until we, t we can test it. Do you know about how many residents are impacted by this order, this evacuation order? Uh, I do not have the, the number at this time. So, yeah. Uh, so far, he's suspected of driving under the influence and also assault with a deadly weapon on a peace officer. What can you tell us about the situation now? What is happening now? So, uh, right now, we are uh, the Special Enforcement Bureau de deputies are formulating a tactical plan to. Uh, bring the, the suspect into custody. How long does he last? I mean, do you just let him, let him wait it out? What's the plan? Our special enforcement deputies there are working uh, swiftly to try to formula, formulate a plan to bring this custody into, to bring the suspect into custody as quickly as possible. And we do not have a estimated time. All right, we've been listening there to... Uh... Okay, so uh, we just dipped in there to Fox 11's broadcast. Right, I Let's think go. we are going to rejoin you now live after we just learned... There, uh, Marla Tea is also uh, on digital for Fox 11 in Los Angeles. Uh, and so uh, the standoff continues. You heard there from that public information officer uh, that charges the suspect could be facing include driving under the influence... Uh, and assault with a deadly weapon to a police officer. Obviously, that is the vehicle. Uh, and so this is going on almost four hours now. And so we're going to listen into more of Fox 11's coverage of this. As you heard there, uh, there were some reports that possibly family members of this suspect are on the scene. They, meaning police officers, formulating this plan to take him into custody apparently have been in direct communication with the suspect, at least shouting commands, orders, what have you, trying to communicate uh, the best way they can. Let's listen back in. 
Charles, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I'll, I'll work to bring that, get that confirmed to you. But nonetheless, I do know that he came into contact with law enforcement vehicles. Uh, again, three pit maneuvers at least were attempted and then everything came to an end when he hit a dead end here in Compton. This is a flood control area. We just learned from that deputy there that some residents in this area, uh, no surprise, have been asked to evacuate their homes out of an abundance of caution. People, maybe you're watching us from the city of Compton. If you live anywhere near this, the deputy just said, stay inside, lock your doors. Obviously a dangerous situation that has now gone on for several hours. We've also learned that uh, maybe this isn't new information because I saw this happening earlier, that the suspect inside the vehicle was seen inhaling some sort of a substance. It's been reported that it's nitrous oxide, AKA laughing gas uh, out of a balloon. I saw that with my own eyes earlier where he was inhaling an unknown substance out of a balloon. The deputy there said he was also seen inhaling a substance unknown from a tank, from a canister. Uh, so that has also happened. So clearly the suspect not in his right mind. That's an understatement as our shot now zooms into the SWAT team, the tactical team there from the sheriff's department. We heard from that uh, law enforcement officer at the podium that the special enforcement team is collaborating uh, to figure out the best plan of attack in order to get this guy out of that white pickup truck and into custody. That's the plan. He says we're working to do that as quickly as possible. Well, this has been happening since one o'clock this afternoon. It's 510 here on the uh, the West Coast. Maybe you're joining us from the East Coast. I understand that this has attracted a lot of eyeballs just because it's just been so wild to watch. I mean, the pursuit was wild. And when this came to an end at this wash at, you know, one o'clock more than four hours ago, we thought, OK, it's only a matter of time. We've covered these sorts of pursuits many times and it's only a matter of time until we get the suspect into custody. Well, here we are four hours later. We've also seen this was also why this guy will now be charged with assault with a deadly weapon on a peace officer. As soon as he hit this dead end and he saw that he was surrounded and had literally nowhere to go, he did go in reverse and he was ramming the black and white that you see there right behind him. So he used his vehicle as a deadly weapon. It will be considered as such and hence the charge that he will face assault with a deadly weapon on a police officer, on a peace officer. In terms of injuries, uh, I don't think that there have been any, any injuries to uh, pedestrians along the way. Maybe vehicles were damaged, but uh, in terms of injury, uh, body, bodily injury to innocent, suspected, unsuspecting bystanders, I don't think there are any of those. Uh, I don't think any deputies have also been injured in this, but we're working to get that uh, figured out for you and confirmed. Certainly hope not. Sky Fox now zooming in on this SWAT team uh, there. Clearly, they are getting ready to make a move. Uh, joining us, uh, it's nice to have a little bit of company here. We have Stu Mandel. He uh, is in our chopper uh, early in the morning, and he covered this pursuit earlier on when we first jumped on the air with Aroxia Carpadian. Stu, you were overhead. You saw all of this unfold. Go ahead. What do you make of it all these hours later? It's not wild to watch. Do we have Stu? Bear with us, folks. Just give me the thumbs up if, if in fact, we Sorry do about have that. Stu. We got, uh, we, we, got some, uh, we got some audio issues here, but I've been listening to Marla talking, and she was making comments about what, uh, what, what was going on earlier on. Uh, we were there. Clearly, we were there. We were watching this happen live, and that whole part about the attempt, we heard the uh, press briefing with the uh, PIO from the uh, Sheriff's Department talking about the assault with a deadly weapon on a peace officer. That was when that uh, pickup truck collided with one of the deputies' vehicles. After that pit maneuver, we saw that and pointed it out when it happened. We saw that vehicle kind of bump one of those deputies' vehicles. I'm watching the feed live. I hope the timing is about right, but you can see right there, 
the uh, SEB folks, the, the Sheriff's Department version of SWAT, they've got their one of their toys out right there. That's going to be a drone. I have, a, I have an idea they're going to be bringing that drone or flying around, looking, maybe trying to really make sure that the best they can, that that suspect has no weapons inside that vehicle. Also, we are talking about this going on for four hours, maybe more. Uh, it, it definitely has been. And you've just got to wonder about that guy in the truck, even if he was inebriated earlier on. How long can you just sit in a vehicle? I was watching some of these shots uh, moments before we went live, and it almost looked like he's getting bored about just sitting in that vehicle. It's like he's almost kind of saying, come on, guys, arrest me. Let's bring this thing to an end. Uh, this all happening out here in the Compton neighborhood. Right now they're keeping a real focus on that drone. They probably want to see that see that fly over there, keep an eye on where it's going to go, and that's probably the reason why the camera operator and the helicopter right now is keeping that shot. But that suspect sitting in that vehicle, I was watching him fidget. One of the things that we do uh, in the helicopter is read body language because we can't, we're not down there. We're not, we can't hear the conversation. We can't, you know, we're not getting the cues that other people are getting when they're, uh, when they're watching or when they're on the ground. So you kind of watch people's body language. And you can see this guy looking in the mirror. He's getting a little anxious. He's, you know, the, 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 body, the body language has changed. So this kind of gives me the idea that perhaps that uh, this is going to be coming to, you know, he's starting to get desperate. So maybe he might even just open the door and give up. I'm just hoping he doesn't throw that thing in the drive and try to get away. Um, the, the, we've been getting these wide shots also of this, uh, of this area. There's a pedestrian bridge right next to where that pickup truck is. You can see that sidewalk. Well, that sidewalk continues over the wash to the other side. There's deputies over there as well. So if he decides to maybe perhaps run, and I haven't seen a dog on the scene yet, so if he decides to run, then there are deputies that will meet him on the other side of that bridge right there. But right now, there were, you know, the, that drone seems to be the, the most interesting part of this afternoon right now. This has been a long and tedious standoff. The deputies from the sheriff's department doing an amazing job and you know this is the thing it's like much like the newscast they're handing it off to other people they you know uh, the original deputies that were down there were the patrol deputies we watched them as they basically pulled out every trick in the book to try to get that suspect out of the vehicle then after that we waited for a little bit and then we started seeing you know i, I make the joke that it's management but you know the sergeant started showing up and they were like okay 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 we're going to bring in SCB. And so they basically changed, you know, they, they did a shift change down there. So now we have these SCB guys there. And these are, you can see them, they are, they're trained for these type of situations. They do standoffs. They do rescues. They do this type of deal. This is their thing as it would be. Right, so they've been here for a good, probably almost three hours now. And, you know, we heard the, the PIO talking about a timely putting together a plan and making a timely uh, effort to get that suspect out of the vehicle. Well, I'm almost wondering if that, that suspect doesn't want to just get out of that vehicle. Come on. I mean, if you've been sitting in a truck for four hours, I mean, it, 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 it's time. It's time to get out of that vehicle. So right now we're just kind of keeping an eye on what's going on. And of course, uh, we want to see what what's happening out there but of course the, the other side of it is uh you know they it's still a dangerous situation that suspect could injure himself they don't want to see that there's always that possibility that truck still runs he has the keys uh we watched earlier on as uh marlon you might have seen that or not but and that vehicle was actually in reverse rammed up against that uh, deputy's vehicle and those tires just spinning and smoking and he was, you know, making an effort or a gesture to either get away or to create a situation where he was trying to frighten off the other deputies, which they weren't frightened by any means, but it was the same, t same thing. Safety. You don't want to be next to one of those tires when they explode. And they might have with that kind of heat, that kind of tension. Something could have happened, so they kind of backed off. There's also spike strips under there, but that truck really not going to be able to get anywhere. Uh, right now, you can see Sky Fox is kind of moving around a little bit, getting a little bit of a different angle. Those deputies armed, those deputies have the body armor on. There is a good possibility they might just do some sort of distractionary thing. I'm not giving away any tactics. I don't have any inside information. I'm literally at home. I'm not even by a scanner. But... We've seen it in the past where they will, you know, do a flashbang or make some sort of 
distraction on one side of the vehicle, and then deputies will pull that guy out of the other side. Who knows what the plan is going to be? It's going to be interesting to see when it comes to an end. But right now, this is still a standoff out here. It's been going on for hours. They've got the big guys in. These are the this is these are you know the big dogs as it would be. That's SEB. That's the sheriff's version of version of SWAT. And that suspect, he's got to be getting tired too. Sitting in that truck, looking out that rearview mirror, contemplating his life choices. You know, it, it, it's it's got to be kind of dreary. I, I don't think he's in there any kind of jovial mood or any kind of uh, any kind of happy. It, it's almost to the point where he's like literally saying, you know, you'd wonder if he's like, just come on, guys, just come and arrest me. Let's get this over. You can see him looking out the window right there. Much different body language than we saw, you know, four hours ago. Four hours ago, he was you know, standing up. He was, you know, throwing things out of the vehicle. He was making all kinds of gestures. Right now, seems to be a little bit more calm, a little bit looking out that window, keeping an eye on what those uh, deputies are doing. And, you know, of course, he's got to be thinking about this also. I, you've got you've to know that, you know, there's the same attitude that we have or I have about that suspect, you know, maybe driving off, injuring a deputy, that suspect's got to be thinking, too, yes, these are trained professionals, but they have loaded weapons. These, they're going to have loaded weapons pointed at me. You just, you know, anything could happen. It is still a very, very dangerous situation out here in Compton. That pickup truck, we're not able to roll tape from earlier, but we watched as that driver was inhaling nitrous from a balloon or what we believe to be nitrous from a balloon earlier on during the pursuit. There was actually a pit maneuver when he was inhaling from that balloon. We were looking to see it, and that's when the deputies did a pit maneuver. We watched him drive on center dividers. We watched him uh, weave his way through police, uh, the deputies' vehicles crashing, not crashing all right, this is Andrew Kraft back here with Live Now. We've been showing you Fox 11 Los Angeles' coverage of this uh, hours-long standoff situation there in Compton in L.A. County. We just showed you that latest and first press conference uh, that has been given for this incident. Uh, it looks like drones uh, are overhead as well. We know there are several Bearcats on the scene. They are formulating their plan to come get the suspect. Uh, obviously, we don't know when. That's what uh, some of the officials said. There is really no timetable they can give us uh, all right it does look like the suspect is out of the vehicle all right let's uh bring up fox 11's coverage here that and it's coming to an end my goodness how quickly that happened all of a sudden yet how long it has taken we have been watching this standoff uh, with this pursuit suspect, this reckless DUI pursuit suspect who is now uh, going to face a charge of assault with a deadly weapon on a peace officer. He has sat in that white pickup truck for hours now, smoking some sort of, or pardon me, inhaling an unknown substance. Next thing you know, his cab was filled with a gas and I believe that was thrown in by the deputies. Maybe that was dropped off by the drone. It all happened so quickly because we saw those, the tactical officers manning that drone. Next thing you know, his cab was filled with smoke and he jumped out of that window and tried to take off. He didn't go far and now he is in handcuffs. He is in custody. Okay, so that happened very, very fast. We thank Fox 11's Marla Tellez there, that suspect now in custody. You saw that drone I was referring to. Uh, we just want to cue it up one more time uh, in case you might have missed it uh, from earlier. It happened, like I said, very, very quickly. Let's uh, cue that back up. Let's replay the moment when that suspect got out of the vehicle, uh, the entire driver's side, filled with smoke, and then authorities taking him into custody. Okay, this is just from moments ago. The suspect, remember, had been, looks like he put on some type of new outer garment there, maybe a jacket, and there he is and he runs. He takes that outer garment off. He gets down on the ground. His hands are up and they come in to arrest him. So uh, if we're gonna be speaking, hopefully maybe to some of our Fox 11 Los Angeles reporters about this whole hours long standoff today, we know there was a lot of interest in it. We're gonna take just a quick commercial break.
that suspect's got to be thinking, too, yes, these are trained professionals, but they have loaded weapons. These, they're going to have loaded weapons pointed at me. You just, you know, anything could happen. It is still a very, very dangerous situation out here in Compton. That pickup truck, we're not able to roll tape from earlier, but we watched as that driver was inhaling nitrous from a balloon or what we believe to be nitrous from a balloon earlier on during the pursuit. There was actually a pit maneuver when he was inhaling from that balloon. We were looking to see it, and that's when the deputies did a pit maneuver. We watched him drive on center dividers. We watched him uh, weave his way through police, uh, the deputies' vehicles crashing. Not Crashing into is kind of a is 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 an is makes it sound more dramatic than it was. He definitely hit that deputy's vehicle though, and that's what we were when it happened. I knew that was the game changer. That's when everything changed because now it's becoming assault with a deadly weapon, not just evading and a DUI. So these uh, the SEB there, you can see that large uh, pole in front of those uh, deputies right there. We've seen that in the past. They will put a different type of gas canister than the ones that we saw earlier on. If you were watching from way back when, they actually had deputies walking up holding these canisters of, of, you know, gas. We call it CS gas. I'm not really sure if that's a technical term anymore. That's what they used to call it back in the day. But it's tear gas, basically. It's something that's going to annoy that uh, suspect. But what the what SEB has inside there is different types, different brands. And that pole right there that you see, they will put that canister. It's basically like one of the, you've seen those old, uh, you know, the, the claws and stuff that Throw the kids have in. and some of the elderly people have these, like, grabby things. All right, that, Stu you know, Mandela, so I apologize. I'm going to interrupt you because he's jumping out, obviously, because of this gas is coming out. Now he's making a run for it as he gets rid of his hoodie and he doesn't look like he's going to make it very far. Hands up, hands up, just like that, and it's coming to an end. My goodness, how quickly... That happened all of the sudden, yet how long it has taken. We have been watching this standoff uh, with this pursuit suspect. This On the back of this truck bed here after taking that suspect into custody uh, who um, had police on a pursuit first and then an hours long standoff situation there. It uh, just wrapped up moments ago. Uh, you saw it live as well. And so they're taking away this banged up white pickup truck. Uh, we watched it really get a beating to it during this whole standoff and chase and pursuit situation. So authorities taking it away. Remember we heard from uh, officials on the scene in that very brief press conference uh, that that suspect uh, is going to be facing charges that could include uh, driving under the influence uh, and assault with a deadly weapon to a police officer.